If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, what were you just saying about your, your girl and the music? You were starting to say that I interrupted you. What was the whole deal with that? My girl and the music? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We, we were listening to... No, we were listening to Rush this morning while we were working out. So I put like Rush Tom on. Tom Sawyer? Yeah. And she doesn't know who Rush is. Tom Sawyer, bing, bing, bang. Yeah, so she's like, she's yeah. like, oh, shit, I like this. Yeah. And I'm like... Oh, dinner, dinner. Hell yeah. And she's like, what if I bought you tickets to watch Rush? And then I ejaculated. <laughs> Oh my god! I got so, I got weird. I got so excited. On, on that note, let's talk about Bradley Martin, dude. Yeah. So uh, he he kind of shattered my conception of him. What I thought of him, you know what I mean? Because I know him through his Instagram videos. You know, we're squatting on the the little hoverboard. And social media like, is always truthful. Chicks yeah. and all that stuff. And uh, he's he's a legit guy. He's been a trainer for a long time. I did not know this. Yeah. He was an actual like a real personal trainer for a long period of time, not just some guy who. You know, looks muscular. He's actually trained lots of people, and we walked in to meet with Bradley and his uh, two co-hosts of their podcast, Mason Cervantes and Brandon Gertis, in their gym. Uh, what's the name of the gym? Zoo Culture. Yeah, yeah Zoo Culture, so. right? Sick gym. Yeah, it was a really cool gym. And one of the things, uh, maybe you guys can back me up on this. You know, I've been in gyms for so long that I can feel. Yeah, the energy right mm-hmm. away. The energy and right. the vibe. Yeah, definitely and positive vibe. In there. Very positive. It's a. It's one of those gyms that you want to lift in. Like yeah. if you're really serious about lifting, you want to lift and hang out. Yeah, and I think it's a reflection of the culture that that he has built and that his team has built in that place. But uh, this interview, it gets pretty deep. Like oh, uh, we go all over the place. All over the place. Yeah. We have a lot of fun conversation. He has uh, some great stories he throws in there. Great stories. We ask him some deep questions. Um, it's emotional. You'll be surprised. Yeah, Bradley got emotional a couple times in this, talking about a few different things, and um, it was uh, it was long too. I think we recorded it was like a two hour. Right? Yeah. Isn't this going to be like a yeah, two hour interview? I believe it's over two hours. Yeah, it was a great interview. You're gonna be you're gonna hear sides of Bradley Martin and things he's gonna talk about in this episode that he told us he's never talked about before. So buckle your seatbelts. Uh, now, if you don't know who Bradley Martin is, uh, you can find him on YouTube uh, under his name, Bradley, B-R-A-D-L-E-Y, Martin, M-A-R-T-Y-N. He's got 1.2 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. Uh, his podcast is Culture Cast, which he hosts with Mason and Brandon. You can find that on, on iTunes and YouTube. Um, his Instagram, he's got, how many followers do you have on Instagram? 2.5 million. He's one of the biggest fitness celebrities on Instagram, right? Right, absolutely. Uh, his Instagram page is Bradley underscore Martin. Um, and his apparel line, which is, uh, relatively successful in the fitness space is, uh, I can't read that there. It's exactly. BM fit gear. BM fit So without any further ado, here is Adam, Justin, and myself talking to the podcast hosts of culture cast, which includes, the famous, insta-famous Bradley Martin. How did you guys all meet each other? How does this work? Refer, refer to episode one of our podcast. <laughs> Grinder. Grinder. Uh, yeah. Grinder. Grinder. Yes. <laughs> Got weird. You guys all know each other for a long time or what? Yeah, yeah we a uh, little over 10 years ago uh, through college. Like Mason and I both worked at a supplement store, uh, so that's how we met. And then Brad had actually noticed me from an online forum uh, called T Nation that I used to post on. Oh, T- we know T Nation. Yeah. yeah. yeah nice. so, uh, actually got good content. Yeah, I, I was a big, uh, like I was on that. They used to have better content. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you yeah, what, one, it's one of the better. We, we tease them now. It's one of the better yeah. fitness, <laughs> yeah. you know, content places because a lot was, of the stuff uh, out there is bullshit. Yeah, I was on that website from, I don't know, probably 2004 to 2008, like during that time period. Mm-hmm. And I was primarily on the steroid forum and, uh, you know, posting all the stuff. I was only like a 19-year-old kid, but I came across on the internet as like I really knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brad was also a kid and. He had, I guess, read some of my stuff, and he saw me in the gym, and so he approached me in the gym. How that's how, how that's kind of how the three of us yeah. got together. Well, like, how do you recognize you? From the Avatar from, photo, or what is it called? Avatar, right? Yeah. Yeah. From the years. Oh, yeah. really? Because yeah. it was before social media. It was like the little profile Avatar yeah. photo. Avatar. It was like a competition photo of his, and I was like, I, I noticed him from the back. I was like, from literally, I was like, I know that guy from somewhere. Yeah. I know back I recognize of his head because you see this. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 no. Don't take me there. His ears. His ears. Oh, those shredded was glutes. I know those. Yeah. I was looking over a desk because I was like, I was a trainer at the time. So I was like looking out from a desk and I seen him in his ears. I was like, I know that guy. So I waited for him to come back in like the next evening because I was like, oh, there. because I said, do you, do you know this guy? And they're like, he's here every night. So he's like eight o'clock every night. So I was like, oh, okay. 
I'll find him next time. And Bro, I didn't know you personal trained. How long did you personal train for? You've been in fitness for a while then. <laughs> yeah, since that was like my first. Oh no, my first job was uh, Quiznos. Yeah, I worked there for a week and it was like, and then they told me that I couldn't put enough food on my, you know, because you know you they give you like a certain amount of food you can for employees. Yeah, you like a certain size sandwich. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> and I was like, I, want, I always wanted more, so I was like, fuck, <laughs> I like I can't. I remember thinking like, I'm working this hard. I got to clean all these dishes. I want a bigger sandwich. And the lady would get mad at me every single time. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this job. I had it for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and prior to that, I was a lifeguard. How many big sandwiches did you make in that week? Oh, though? probably every single day. I made like at least three. <laughs> They're like, we're, we're, paying, we're, we're paying this they guy. Were, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was He's eating sure. more sandwiches than his fucking salary. <laughs> Definitely. So I worked there for a week. And then I worked as a lifeguard. And then I worked at- Wait, as you a, could swim? Yeah, I'm a no, great I didn't swimmer. even know that. I worked as a lifeguard. Yeah, like a rock. Huh? Yeah. No, I was I was much skinnier then. Um, not that I'm big now, but I'm skinny now. Anyways, that's a whole different topic. Um, yeah, so I Rexy is a thing. It's a thing. It's a real thing. So then I was a, a kids camp counselor at a private gym, and then I like shadowed under this like trainer when I was like 16, and then like turning 17, I shadowed under this trainer who like was a trainer at uh, it's called Primetime Athletic Club in. Uh, Millbrae, California. Okay. It's okay. like a private, privately owned, like... Up north? Racket. Up north. Oh, shit. I didn't know you were from I, up there. Actually, I'm I, from San Francisco. Oh, there you go. Well, I'm from, I'm from Pacifica. If you guys know up north. Yeah, I know yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. Born and raised in Pacifica. I'm I went to Santa school. Santa Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. I, right down the... Right down. Right down the coast. I went to school in, uh, in Reardon, so I went to all boys high school. Like, hmm. So, anyways, I worked at um, that, that thing as a kids camp counselor and then like worked under this guy who was a trainer and learned a lot of stuff from him. And then as soon as I basically became 18, I was like a trainer ever since. Oh, no shit. So I was turning out at 24 and then... Wait a minute, like, at 24 Hour Fitness? Yeah, initially 24. Well, you, know that, you know that's our, all you know, of our background, right? We grand open clubs for them yeah. for years. Yeah, so initially it was the one in Pacifica and then I transferred. So that was a new one then. Bro, who did, yeah. did you work with? Wait, wait, give me the years. Yeah, who, who was there? Your... Uh, Dan was the Dan was the fitness... He, I, he doesn't do it anymore. Dan, Dan Calahente? I don't think so. Filipino cat? No. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, he was an S. It was like Solomon. Okay. Solomon. I worked there and then I ended up transferring. I, well, I stopped working there for a while. Tra- went up to went up to Sac State, um, stopped training for a little bit, went back down, and then with like I transferred from like that Pacifica to the Twenty Four on Lemon, and that's where I met him. And that's that the one the, in Fullerton. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was the one in Fullerton. Mm-hmm. And then I worked there for a while. I think like maybe a year and a half. Two yeah, years, a couple years, and then two years, and then I went to Gold's Gym and I helped open up the Gold's Gym in in Fullerton back when it was a pre sale. We used to train there, yeah, and then did really well there. And then became a. Um, that mate. was well, not to know, but that was the first time I started getting really pissed at gyms because, like, we would when we were at Twenty Four Hour Fitness, we actually dug stuff like out of their basement to get like the old barbells and metal plates and stuff to have like real shit to train with. Mm-hmm. Right, we right. got tired of the other stuff, and then when we saw that there was a Gold's Gym opening, because um, yeah, we were yeah, like, we, yeah, we were like ecstatic, we're, like, mind blown. Gold's coming, and the Gold's that opened was one of the new like shit kind of corporate ones. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, we have a eucalyptus steam room, but like our barbell oh, sucked. You yeah, know? Oh, it, was, <laughs> so, it was so bad. The worst <laughs> plates. It was, but it, but it was a better gym. And right, it was right, a better right. environment. They had 24 hour fitness. Dude. The lighting yeah. was better and that's always key. Um, <laughs> that's essential. Debatable. And then, um, yeah, so I worked there. I worked there and I did so well there that they, that I, they were like, uh, I wanted to be a group X instructor as well. So I did a boot camp with a bunch of like, uh, I guess mostly my clients are older women. Dude, do you remember the years that you were there? Like, was, we got, was we, Nick Goy, we know the you gotta, same you, people. We know we were in this for 10 plus years in the Bay Area. We ran all the biggest clubs. Like, we had to have crossed paths for sure. Who was, the, who was the DM? At, do you, you remember who was the DM those days? In, at the Golds? No, no, no. At 24, when you were at 24 days. In, uh, in the Bay. Yeah, yeah in the Bay. Bay. Oh, I don't. I didn't, I wasn't there long enough. Oh, okay. Yeah, this I is when you were at Golds. I was spent more time as a trainer, um, like, Orange County. Or in Orange County. Oh, uh, okay. And then at Gold's, I spent a lot of, I think it was like for like three years. Yeah. Three, got that. three years. Um, you guys didn't know anyone from Gold's. No. Mm-mm. No, we, we know the, was it, who owns the Gold down by us? Jerry. Yeah, the McCall yeah. group. McCall. No, so this yeah. is all, this is all like Angel and Willie on the Gold's okay. down here. Okay. Um, but yeah, they, they, they let me become a group X instructor. And then I was like, wait a minute. I was like, Jazzer I spent, size. Yeah, well, I, yeah, it's like a boot camp. So you keep people yeah. going. And then I was like, wait a minute, I'm working like, 12 hours to make a certain amount of money and then I work like three hours in the morning three days a week or one day a week so three hours each basically mm-hmm. three hours a week mm-hmm. and the boot camp was like Monday, Wednesday, Friday and it was in the morning and I was like wait a minute I'm like I'm like making quadruple the amount of money doing like it's significantly less hours mm-hmm. so then I was like I just want to focus on this boot camp thing because it's a like group set and it was like more fun it was like higher energy sure um, 
and then the personal training side, they were all like, they were all mad at me because they were like, no, you got to do more over here, do more numbers, more numbers. And I just got burnt out with this whole like doing numbers. And I was like, and I'm not making any fucking money because they take everything from you. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I just want to do this on my own. And then that's what I started doing. I started like training like fancy people and shit. And then <laughs> fancy people. <laughs> and then fast forward, like Instagram no, came out. It's the evolution of every trainer, right? Yeah. We start off yeah. training yeah. normal people, then yeah. we go to fancy yeah. people. Fancy. With a monocle. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I mean not that, not like, that everyone's not fancy, but like I know exactly what you mean. Fucking yeah. celebrities or something. Sure, sure. Right? Like the, you, know? you charge more fucking per hour or whatever. Yeah. Fancy. Now, is this the yeah. first gym you've ever... Out like you, is this the first gym you've ever owned? Yeah. What's it like? Because now you actually own a gym. It's different being on this side, yeah? Well, first, I want to say it's the first gym we, we've we ever owned. Yeah, okay. So, because, I yeah, obviously. So, for everybody, it's the first gym you guys have owned. Yeah. Yeah. And and I because I don't want to say, because truthfully, without these guys, Offic- I, I Officially, because, I mean, I've been in a lot of gyms in my life that mm-hmm. I felt like I was like, like I, was I the own man. this motherfucker. I owned all those gyms, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but now, officially, yeah, I, I fucking pay for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm like, who, who, how many of drinks? What the fuck are these drinks disappearing so fast? <laughs> so no, but it, I can't take, I can't say me because the, without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. Sure, That's for damn sure. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy, man. This whole like, I think the best part about it is it's more undeniable. Like the internet is so. I don't want. I don't know why I want to say an East Coast word, but fugazi. <laughs> I don't know why I want to say East Coast it's, word. It's, I'm not even East like Coast, it. yeah. but it's so bullshit. Like he dropped, he dropped that, that ass last week. Not too. that it's not like <laughs> it's, it's amazing in, in its in its own right, but it's people just can just make shit up. Correct. And like there, I dealt with this whole shit where like people talked all this shit about me, straight bullshit lies. Now at this point, everyone's kind of come back around and said, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I did that." Blah blah blah. For their own, and they did it for their own benefit. For their own benefit of views and this and that, and then, but then you have skewed opinions on who I am. People who've never met me, people who have never even talked to me, never shook my hand, never said anything to me, have an opinion on me. So when you have something in person, it's like you can't deny. It. You can come through these doors, and right. then you're gonna get. That's who I really am. And right? you, I mean, I mean fi- finding out that you were a trainer and that you guys have been in fitness as long as you have, it, it's totally different. Because there are a lot of celebrities on oh, Instagram yeah. and Facebook, fitness people who are just they're just ripped. <laughs> they're just they don't there. know shit about yeah. fitness. They never no. really oh, worked man. in fitness. Yeah, that's. I think that's 99% of this fucking industry. Right. Most of it. It's bullshit. Yeah. Most of it. Most of it. Which is why we got excited getting into it because it was like, this is easy. <laughs> I've, I've, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I found it's even, a clean house. It's even frustrating too when you've, you've had people that you looked up to at some point and then you finally meet them and you're like, uh, fuck, they're an idiot. That too. Oh, oh, damn. That happens a lot. <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. How many times has that happened to you where you meet somebody and they're just totally different than what you expected? That happened to me one time and that's what kind of changed my perspective on like how I wanted to be when I met people who... When, that, when people started to care about me, right? That's like, I never wanted to be that person. And I feel bad to say it because this person passed away. Um, should I, can I say it? Yeah, I don't feel bad about things. Okay, so you know, you know Greg Plitt. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. So he passed away. Rest in peace. I have nothing, I, nothing, nothing bad to say, but there was a moment where like, I met him at a Fit Expo and he was just a dick to me. Mm. And I, was, I remember I looked up, I was like looking up to like this moment. Mm-hmm. And I met him and he was just an asshole to me. And I was like, fuck, I never, if I ever become popular, because that was part of my goal. Like I wanted to affect people like that person had affected me. Mm-hmm. So then once I got there, I was like, I never wanted to, I never wanted to make someone feel like, oh man, that guy's a dick. Mm-hmm. And because now I like, I spend time with these expos and like when you're, when you're like one of the guys and you guys all, you know, one of the popular guys and you guys all go backstage and people all complain about how many fucking hours they've been there and how many People want to take pictures like motherfucker. Like those are the ones that made yeah. you. Like what the fuck are you complaining about? These right. people are They're making you, you who you are. Yeah. And all these people, it's like they they pretend like this is like this holy like how they are. And oh, I care about people and inspiring. And they're in the back scenes like I can't wait to fucking leave. All these people are so fucking annoying. Like it's a joke. It's a fucking joke to me. Yeah. This shit genuinely is a joke. And it's like yo, you're you're popular on social media. <laughs> You're popular because of these people. Dude, I remember this was like maybe eight years ago. Or well, maybe not quite eight. When did Shreds first come on? Oh, God. When did they yeah, first... we're going to go there. Oh, are we really going to yeah, go yeah. there? I mean, we I know, so I remember. Holy were, shit. I, mean, we, so I forgot out. to say that one. So, oh, I don't give a fuck. Wait, wait. I'll hang talk on, about hang this on. bullshit all day. Right, right. Right. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Use my discount code. Brandon yeah. Brandon is 10. Yeah. If we're going to do it, i got to go. Oh, my God. Listen, no, listen, listen, listen. No, we ragged on them early on. So before. Before we even started like the show, and we had already been talking. And, a brand and, called Pulse. And, oh my god! I'm out. I'm out at Olympia, and this was before I got into competing. This is when I was thinking about getting competing. So I'm like, I better check this scene out because at this point, I'm not even into it. I'm just doing it for the platform. Right. And so I go out to Olympia, and I go out to see this, and I fucking walk through the doors, and there is a fucking 50 foot banner. What year is this? This is. It's gotta be like. 
11, 12. Right? <sighs> yeah, at least, yeah at, least, at least five, nah, five years. Probably 11. Yeah. 13. 12, 13. Is that, yeah. Yeah, what year was that? Whatever. It was, it was the first year. Because I'm, I mean, I'm up and up on that. I'm not that far disconnected that I didn't see this coming. Like, yeah, all of a sudden, yeah. I walk in, and this dude, this kid who I've never fucking met in my life before, he's got a 50 foot fucking banner. Of himself, whole entourage following him. Yeah, and I oh see, I see. I think was it was entourage. it Jay? I think Jay Cutler Security was there guards. that day. Right. And oh there's like God. nobody in line to talk to Jay Cutler, and there's this line around the building to talk to this fucking kid. Yeah. And I was so fascinated with that that moment. I've searched him up on Instagram, figure out who they all are, and this is how I found Treads. <laughs> and I come back and I tell these guys, I'm like, listen, you guys, there's fucking dudes we've never even heard of in fitness. They're just like fucking killing it. They're taking over Olympia. And I've never seen any of any of them in this circuit before, so it blew my me. blew that, my fucking mind. That was the beginning of the end for me. Really? That was when I was like, yeah. "This this is lame now." Like, I'm, I still competed for a few years afterwards, but that was like when all that shit changed. Oh, you competed too? Yeah, I, I did bodybuilding for about ten years and powerlifting for close to that too. Put up a picture of uh, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I don't look actually, like it at all actually, now. This is gonna, gonna shock the yeah, shit Brandon out. Brandon might have been okay? the biggest guy in the room. <laughs> this is gonna shock the oh, shit, shit out of you. This no, is, but it's uh, it, it just says a lot. It says a lot about social media, right? Where like, it's going it right now. It changed yeah. this whole fucking industry. Yeah, yeah. the entire it came entire to the point where like you can be just because you got good abs or like what are, you're a pretty person or whatever, you can just make up some bullshit. Now yeah. all of a sudden you're expert on nutrition. Straight up bullshit. Straight up bullshit. That's that's a hundred percent what motivated us with our show. I mean, we we got on the phone, we started talking, and we just went off, and we're like, we need to do a show. Dude. And we're, let's be fearless and let's just talk about everybody. Oh, damn, damn look dude. at you. Oh, Man. shit, bro. <laughs> Sweet boy. Oh, shit. That's in 2014. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I actually did a... Damn, you look good, dude. I did a couple classic physique shows last year and, and then I just... After USA's, I just retired. You uh, you run all your stuff, you your diet, your yeah, training, I, uh, your programming. I've always done my own thing, uh, but there are people that have helped. Like I became good friends with Stan McQuay since I moved out oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Stan no became kind of like a mentor of mine, so I always ran a lot of stuff. How him. far did you go? Um, with bodybuilding, you know, I qualified for national shows a long time, but I never competed for bodybuilding because I never felt I was ready. Mm -hmm. Like I respect, I respected the game, so to speak. Like I didn't right. want to do USA's until I thought I could win it or be competitive. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so funny. I did this when I came, well, I was men's physique, so my shit didn't even look like that. Right. So I, I was coming in. I remember everyone telling me to get on stage. I'm like, bro, I'm not even going to get on stage until I feel like I can compete with the fucking pros. Like until I feel like I'm even close to that, I don't yeah. even want to fuck around. Well, yeah, so I, great. I would always take a lot of time off in between shows and always improved over time. Um, I started as a teenager and then kind of, you know, sometimes I would take a year or two off in between shows, but always show up with improvements. And uh, I mean, the I guess my best accomplishment or my proudest moment was that picture that Kevin had up there was uh, the 2014 Gold Coast local show here. It was my first overall and uh, so overall victory for bodybuilding. And two weeks prior to that, I did the uh, LA Fit Expo powerlifting invitational. I did deadlift only there, and I pulled over 700 pounds. Yeah, and I, brought those I won it that weekend. brought those triceps up, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, shit. Sorry, bro. <laughs> yeah, not, in that pose, you know, <laughs> just a little more tricep. <laughs> but then I, um, I went on to win two other shows that year. Uh, I didn't win the overall, but I won my class, the heavyweights for the Frigno and the Excalibur, which are decent size shows. What year did you do Frigno? Uh, 2014. The initial. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, the first one. Bro, we were there at the same time. Really? You did I, did, I did Men's Physique the first year nice. at Ferrigno. That was actually one of the, the way they expedited there, and that yeah. show was one of the nicest shows that I'd been to. Yeah, and I, I really liked their show. I mean, Chris Menace, the promoter, is a, a friend of mine, and he okay. he's a yeah. competitor himself, and he'll, like, the muscle contest shows, you know, even though there are people there that I like, I don't really care for how Notice they put them the on. ears, though. But, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. so it's like I, I never grew into those. Meaner, they're sharper. Uh, it's like, it's you're like a hypertrophy going on there. Yeah. He hears everything. It's a <laughs> it's you look, you look like a Jack St. Pierre. That's what you look like. You're, you're, oh, shit. I mean, right? I, oh, oh like, let's see it. go. Like a Jack St. Pierre right there. It. We're going to have to change the oh, wow. to Jack St. Pierre. Right? Right? All right. Which, by the way, can we talk about how badass that was, dude, to watch that fight? I felt like an asshole because I... Bet against him? No. No, hell no, hell no. I didn't know This guy tried to get me to it. Someone goes, you some girl a girl was like did you watch the fights and i was like no she was like yeah some old ufc fighter came back i was like really? what and then i and then i googled it and i was like oh i missed this bro fucking. that was the I best was card so that was that the was best card. ufc card i've seen card. in years dude it was yeah. like oh was that was an amazing card yeah. i mean three championships got un, you know, defeated yes it was yeah. amazing that's so badass that's excellent man. he went another round though he's not going any further than that like you could tell he was gassed yeah he's big he's i yeah. mean you could tell for him to fill out that frame it's right. something sure. different so who who irritates you guys the most now Oh, so we got, we already talked about shreds, but where do, I, where do I start? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are they are they though? Do you, are, are Brad, you stay up on Brad them? Brad is the most irritating to me. Yeah. Most yeah. Are, they, are they are they still <laughs> dipping down? Do you know what's going on yeah, with it them? Seems like they kind of. I don't even know. Uh, they're, they're gone now. I think because yeah. oh, I, I talked to oh. one of the other guys the other day, um, and he was like, "Yeah, wow. I'm starting my own company." So like, and he's one of the main people. 
Oh, really? Yeah. I just I, don't want to say his name because I, <laughs> you, you, you don't want to railroad Yeah, me. <laughs> no, I just don't. I just, you know. Yeah. Don't give There's just some things that just, just deserve to stay in the past. <laughs> well, I've, I've gotten to the in point sync. where I, so like to, to finish my brief story with that, like I, I finally did the USA's for classic physique, right? Mm-hmm. And it was, it let me down. And then every expo I went to, I was like, just, it's all social media stuff. Like everything changed from when I first got into it to where it is now. And I was like, I don't like this anymore. And then I got to where like I hated everybody. It was like all these companies, all these social media dipshits that never did anything. Like I hate them all, and like pure hatred, which is not good because I don't like to just have that, right? Right. And so I guess the point where I was like, you know what? That's just that's the world we live in in any industry, especially one that grows. And fitness has exploded because of social media. So like it, there's no point in like hating on what somebody else is doing or trying to look for like the people that are crooked anymore to the fit tees like we talked about mm-hmm. in our one of our episodes that. Instead, it's better to just focus on like what you do and you stay yeah. in your lane. So well, to speak. I'll, t- like, I'll tell you who's like, made out. Lead by example and and do what you want to do and, and mm-hmm. maybe yeah. you know and don't worry about all the other companies that are fucking. Well, up I'll and, tell you who's you made know. out like bandits is these supplement companies because they're getting these guys to rep them and stuff and they're giving them nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh you know my god, it's hilarious. T-shirts. Yeah. That's yeah. the hustle, bro. It's, that's yeah. the hustle. There's a lot of people. Well, I mean, Shred, that Shreds did that model beautifully. I mean, that's what they did so well. <laughs> yes, yeah, look at Jack it. Pierre. Did I hit that or what? I thought I hit that pretty well. That's pretty legit. Did you see the Damn, Halloween, bro? the nose and everything. Right? And he was a fighter. What happened to your uh, nose, bro? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think mine's been broken a few times. Oh, okay. Right? No, um, I mean, just on that point of this whole supplement thing, like, yeah, it's 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 funny, man. But it's, it's like, what are you supposed to do? Even though you, the, I feel like there's a small percentage of people who know better. But there's such a large percent of people who are just like, they're just, because fitness is still so new, that they're just like, I'm willing to listen to anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And like, because, I mean, people still go, how do I lose fat? Like, no, it's, you, think, you think that it's like, oh, we understand it by now, but like, there's, I still get tons of DMs, tons of messages, Instagram, there's a lot Snapchat, of confusion. everywhere. There's a lot of uh, misinformation, a lot of counter information. I think part of the issue is that you have general, uh, there's some general truths when it comes to like nutrition and training. But the individual variance is so fucking massive to where you can have one person who's like, I eat keto and it fucking works great for me. I feel yeah. amazing. You got some person over here that's like, I'm a vegan and I feel great eating vegan. And next thing you know, it's this debate. Yeah, you hear all, all and you're like, what works for me? It's and the then right everyone way. is confused. Yeah, right? it's just this, the individual variance is so huge. The same thing with training. You see yeah. some people well, that respond it, so well. It's natural for us to, for people to want to, people want to get put themselves in a box, dude. Everybody wants it to identify with a tribe or a group. And so it feeds right into that. So shout out to the squad. Right. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, though. Everybody, people, people want to belong to a group. And then the real thing that I like talking to, especially with guys like you is, that's a hard thing to navigate when you're trying to build a business, build an empire yourself. It's like, how do I do that at the same time, stay true to who I who I am and not become like somebody like a shreds type of model, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. Fuck. Right? <laughs> I feel so bad. We just keep like, uh, uh, well, oh, don't feel bad. Fuck them. No, no, I don't yeah. feel bad. I'll yeah, do it, right? They did Fuck it to them. themselves. Yeah, right? They yeah. did it to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it became it a learning experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> is your, was your question how to... Yeah, like how do you? Well, here's the thing. Like, there's something to learn from these guys. You know, the information was shit. Whatever, but can't deny they made millions of dollars. But they yeah. well, besides, like they got the they got the word out. They're very very good at doing that. So there's something to be you know be said about I mean, that. It's just marketing, though. It's just right. Marketing. Like learn that right because then you've got these really brilliant people who are just nobody can hear them because they suck at that side of it. You, yeah. you know what I've what I found though is that like a lot of times the people the experts so to speak, um, they're spending so much time being an expert or learning and stuff that they don't spend time on the marketing. Mm-hmm. And like that's why there's even some supplement companies and a lot of even the the people that probably should have the biggest platforms don't have a platform because like they're so busy just doing the thing. Mm-hmm. Like they're so busy learning the science or reading and researching. So that whatever, was the you know? motivation behind Mind Pump. So Mind Pump, what what we found when we started like diving through everything was like, dude, all the, the smartest people that are writing all the great books that are actually doing all the research, nobody knows who the fuck they are. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't they don't give a shit about social media or Instagram or YouTube yeah. or any of these things. So they're over here in their corner or in their lab doing all the studies. Meanwhile, all these kids that nobody you know nobody knows who the fuck they are. They have no cr- no credentials whatsoever out here, and they're fucking promoting all this bullshit. Yeah. And so that was really the motivation was okay. Let's first establish ourselves as an authority. Once we create ourselves as an authority, now let's bring up these people who we think that like man are putting out a good message or have good information. Hey and Kevin, show them. does that sound kind of familiar? <laughs> to the YouTube thing we did for a little bit, yeah. I, I had a yeah a brief a brief uh, YouTube thing that I had kind of started that I might bring back that was kind of the same concept. I wanted to do the same thing because I, I got to the point where I was like, you know, I maybe I can try and learn some of the social media stuff that I've learned, especially being good friends with Brad, 
and then apply that in a way that I could then start to give a platform to people that like right. you, you just know. need a douchey friend like me who knows how to use the internet. <laughs> and that's then, why we yeah, got Adam. Ex- you know? <laughs> yeah. And that's why I got this guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, what make, that's what makes a great team though. That's what's probably yeah. special about all three of you guys. You guys are you guys seem to be very different, which is like the three of us. We all yeah. even though we're all yeah. in health and fitness, we have different backgrounds and that's what makes the Who's the weakest one? Like, He's the weakest one. Yeah. <laughs> strength strength we, wise yeah. strength. We, we, yeah. we yeah. Weakest, it's different lists. Let's depends on the this. lift and if yeah. you're gonna do pound for pound. He's the pound for pound guy. I can tell. I can tell. Let's go. What's a Wilkes? He's got the Wilkes. He's got the Wilkes. Anytime we try, every time we get into PR, it like breaks the calculator. Uh, oh, uh, shit. Yeah. You weigh this much? Yeah, yeah let's be uh, honest, bro. <laughs> so, so what's your deadlift? Uh, all time, 600. Now hey. it's probably in the low fives, low to mid fives. Yeah, yeah. That's a curious about it. <laughs> I, I oh, had, you're funny. I had, <laughs> I had this guy one time that was um, – he, he came – I don't even know why he was debating with me. I, I was like the target, <laughs> right? And like at the time, I was weighing closer to 250, and like I was pulling like – yeah, I probably could have pulled mid sevens. So I pulled seven forty five in the gym. Seven twenty two is my best in it, in the meet. But uh, and he was like, "Well, you know, I weigh like one fifty something, and I could pull like you know five forty or whatever. Like, so my Wilkes is better, and like I'm officially stronger than you, and this and that, and I'm natural, and you're not." And I was like, "So what you're telling me is you're on steroids, and you're bigger and stronger than me." And so I need to tell you this to feel better about myself. I was like, because at the end of the day, say whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah. I'm on a bunch of gear. I'm a lot fucking bigger than you. And I'm a lot stronger than you. So fuck off. It is what it is. You should have been like, yeah, Yeah. can can you go move that fridge for me then? (laughs) I can do that. (laughs) So how how are you guys like in the podcasting world now? I mean, you've you've dominated Instagram. You've dominated YouTube. Now you're making your, your way into podcasting. How are you guys liking it right now? I uh, like to meet. <laughs> I, didn't like to I, mean, meet I, I have my year. answer ready. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need to be better Brad, at scheduling. Brad paid for everything <laughs> in here, so I, you know, I look at him right away. I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah," because we just a lot of. We money. were like, "This is gonna be fun." Yeah, and then Brad's like, "Fuck, how much did you spend on this shit?" And I was like, "Yeah, I, I got to total that up." Yeah, <laughs> um, get back to you on that. Honestly, <laughs> like just just uh, podcasting in general, I enjoy it probably more than any anything else that I've done because it's just more real. It's just more right. raw. Mm. There's less like. Cause I don't get me wrong, like that's how I got popular. Was like I did the pizzazz shit, like I lifted girls, I jumped out of pools, I did all the crazy shit. But like I've always noticed from conversation with people who've come and talked to me is like the real shit is what they cared about. The the videos where I talked about like life and death mm-hmm. and motivation and like real real stuff that affects your heart. So this this format I feel like aids that so much more. Like if some because if someone's willing to listen for an hour, right. they're really trying to learn some shit. Yeah. So I think in general, like the 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 platform of a podcast is more is more effective and can be more effective it's just like maybe there might be less people to jump on it initially mm-hmm. but um it's way deeper they're way it's, more loyal the, yeah. the people who first off business wise podcasts com- they convert better than anything else on a number yeah. per number yeah just because that people listen to you for an hour you connect with them better they get to know you a little more it's way deeper it may yeah. not be as wide but it's a lot deeper. That's I mean, what I enjoy. Yeah, is is the is the fact that like you can connect with someone on a different level than just like here's some crazy shit. This is how you do abs. Do some shit. Do some curls. Get arms. Whatever. And it's just kind of like it's kind of like this because that's how everyone wants to like Instagram. Everyone wants it. They want new shit now today. Next, right. to, next minute. Next minute. They everyone they want it. Like that's the whole idea of like most of the social media platforms now is like as much give it all. Like get it good. Get it good. And they just kind of keep going like this. And it's mm. a constant. You need more. You need more. This is more like. It's almost like you write a short book or something, mm-hmm. right? No, it's, and, well, yeah, yeah. You, take a page out of Tim Ferriss. Yeah, because yeah. your so Tim Ferriss did. Yeah, and yeah. your social media is very entertaining. It's got that you know Instagram flair doing all that stuff. With the podcast, what are you trying to deliver? What is yeah. it that you want to show people? What am I trying? Yeah, to Yeah, what are you guys trying to show? So I would say it's, it's along the same lines of like, I kind of why I started. I mean, for me, I know these guys have different perspectives on this. Um, it's the reason why I do what I do is because I want to help people and and not in a sense of just help people like everyone says that shit is because i've been in moments in my life where like i felt like i needed help and i wanted help and i looked for help and it wasn't always help so it was kind of like i grew up without a father i had i had moments in my life where i felt very like just uh alone in a sense or like when i achieved things there wasn't a oh good job and that that idea of like i don't know just in a sense of having hope that things can get better Mm -hmm. and and i don't know being almost like a big brother to people Brad divorced kind of or passed away? What was how he took his life when I was six. So my mom had divorced when I was. How crazy is that? That's huh? crazy. So yeah. they divorced when I was five, and then uh, and then a year later he took his life when I was six. He hung himself. Um, yeah. So that's, that's my dad took his life at seven. Yeah, when I, I was seven. When you were seven, how would he do it? 
shot himself. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. No so, note, no nothing. Wow. So for me, it's that. It's the. It's like growing up and damn, I don't want to get emotional. Uh, Try roll, roll with it. Yeah. Shit is always so difficult. <clears throat> It's definitely made you into the man that you are today, for sure, you know? Everything from the empathy side that you have, not having that model, I didn't have the same thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you, what, what you'll find, too, you really want to help people. Can, you know, letting people see who you really are is one of the most effective things you could do. We talk about this on the show, and it's, it's very difficult to do it when we talk about our motivations for exercise, which are based on insecurities. You know, I grew up very skinny, so I wanted to yeah. be the bigger guy, and I did things to my body that probably weren't the best. Um, and I went through a divorce while we're recording, uh, you know, our podcast while Mind Pump is going on. I'm yeah. going through this whole thing, and those are the episodes that connect the most with our audience. It's also the most cathartic. You'll find that podcasting, at least for us, the most it's probably the most therapeutic thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah, for I, sure. I, I would definitely say that's, uh, I guess, what I wanted to bring to it. Not not so much in therapy, but just give people a source of entertainment. And like, uh, you know, cause I, I've had a bunch of different influences with podcasting and it's something, I mean, I, I don't know if you, you know, of Kevin and Bean out here, mm. uh, mm-hmm. just, you know, LA radio yeah. okay. and like, they've okay. just always been something to me where I've like heard them and I heard Howard Stern growing up and I was just like, man, like these voices, these like, you know, they, they provide funny, they provide serious, they provide, you know, um, up to date entertainment, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with like uh, Ralph Garman and like Kevin Smith. You know, people like Brandon Schaub and mm-hmm. yeah. you know um, Joe Rogan. You know, I, I just have such a different wide range of like people I like to listen to at different times. Just because I'm like oh, I'm feeling like this today, I need some comedy, so I'm gonna listen to. Bro, you're gonna fucking love yeah. Mind Pump, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything we get compared to is everything you just got influenced. Yeah, for, yeah. Sure. for sure. Same people. Absolutely. You yeah. It's yeah. Like we've been coined as the Howard Stern of fitness. That's we try and bring this. That. Yeah, comedy approach, but then we also get fucking deep and talk and we share yeah. our own insecurities like we came out early on and you have these bodybuilder looking dudes that are steroided out and then all of a sudden we start talking about feelings and emotion and like what drove us in the gym because let's be real like that's the kids that are getting into it right now everybody who starts to work out right we start working out because of an insecurity because something yeah. about it something we don't like i'm too small yeah. i'm too fat i'm too short i'm not good lucky enough someone's not giving me attention something drove all of us to walk in that fucking gym and there's something there's something to take from that because there's uh, there's a lot of power in that that probably propelled all of us to where we're at now today and there's something and to me i feel like when we get to uh, the level especially where you guys are at where mind pump is at that we kind of we owe that to share with the other young i wish there was some yeah. I want to say to your point exactly is that so many people look at the end product like who I am or what I've done. They're like, man, that's cool. I want to do that. I want to be popular. I want to do fitness. Like I get messages all the time. Like how do I get my name out there and be popular? Mm -hmm. It's like you guys need to figure out why the fuck you give a shit about this. Like that's exactly what you said is that point of like what pushed you in the gym? What made you want to be better? What made you want to be greater? It's like it's something emotional. It's not just like I want to lose weight or I want to get bigger arms or I want to be like Bradley Martin. That's that's too vague. It's not it's not close enough to someone's heart Mm -hmm. and it's like you got to think deeper like why do you give a fuck about what you're doing and not enough people do that just look at the end product like i said and they're like i want that how do i get that let's i need big arms i need this but at some point it fades because there's no real there's no real passion behind it right the passion comes from that moment like the thing that i went through that i was like i want to i want to change my life i want to affect other people's life positively because i I wanted that right Mm -hmm. so that it comes deep inside of me so when i lift and when i do all these things that make me better or crazy or whatever it, it's it's com- like it's coming from there. Like when I go to deadlift a heavyweight, like I'm thinking about the, that's why it matters to me. This is what it's for. I'm gonna lift this weight, not just like I'm just gonna lift this weight because it's gonna make me cool or popular. Mm-hmm. Right. So it all started there, and then eventually I look back one day and it's like, oh, people give a shit about what I'm doing. It was never like I just want to be popular. Right. It was like I'm gonna do this. It was almost like an accident, almost side effect of it. Absolutely. And so, and I think people forget to look at like why you're doing what you do. Like mm-hmm. you said, you asked me why why are you doing this? What do you mm-hmm. like about it? Right. And I, no one, they just kind of like, uh, they see shit and they're like, that's really cool. I want to do that. But it, it, like you said, is it maybe it's not for them? Right. Yeah. Because they don't, like, they, why? Right. Yeah. Like, not enough people can answer why they do something. Oh, yeah. And you know, that's I, what really drives you is the why. The and, purpose. and when you fall down, that's what yeah. picks you back and up. And we, 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 we realized just doing our show that when we're driven by business and all that stuff, we do okay. But when we go back to the purpose mm-hmm. and the passion, that's when we succeed the most. All as a side effect, that's when shit really starts to take off. And it's because it's something bigger, or we feel like it's something bigger than us. It's bigger than how much we're going to produce or how many downloads we have or whatever. It's literally because we want to – I'm talking to me 
when yeah. I was 13 years old. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We all went through these same struggles and, and that same path. And we just want to make sure that people understand that, you know, and then there's other, you know, there's, there's better ways to go about this. And so, you know, what can we do to kind of provide that in our years of experience training people one-on-one, you know, what does that look like? We want to be able to show people, look, you know, this is not popular right now, but this is going to benefit your body so much more. And, you know, it's just tough because you're, you're going to fight through all of this misinformation that's out there. And, you know, it's one of those things. We're just super passionate about that. Because well, Brad, what, I didn't get that. I've, I've watched uh, I've watched you since you pretty much got going on Instagram. I've been uh, following you for a long time. And I actually kind of feel like uh, <clears throat> the direction you're going now with the podcast and even your message, the stuff that you share uh, where you talk uh, talk on your Insta story and stuff like that, I feel like you're, even your tone's kind of changing a little bit. Is there, Are you kind of directing, going a different direction now, or do you feel like you're starting to get more in touch and share more of these types of things? Because I feel like you said when you first started, it was more like all the, look at this cool shit, you got the, you got the attention, and now I feel like you're kind of steering the ship in a little bit of a different direction. Do you feel that way? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you have to. I think things have to constantly change. You got to constantly evolve, and I just—it's just kind of like what matters to me because that's always what I've like driven off of is like what actually really matters to me. So, it's always mattered to me. It just kind of became more like I guess I got more like fuck it. It was like this is who I really am. I'm gonna be more of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna show more love. I'm gonna Hell give yeah. more, more yeah. like give more much more back as much as I can. I want to like instead of trying to be like. The crazy fucking and because that's who I am as well. And these guys know me for years. I've always been the loud guy, the crazy guy, the funny guy, the whatever, the annoying guy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, pretty and much. Uh, mostly annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not funny. Oh, <laughs> come on, bitch! You know I'm oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> don't make no lie. Don't and lie. Was never like the strong Those are the ones guy. That hurt. Yeah. <laughs> sure you not funny. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. like we live, we were training right. with him because we, <laughs> we were laughing at him in the gym. He was the funny guy. This is all bullshit. Now they think they have jokes all of a sudden. That's the funny thing. Is like all of a sudden you got jokes. <laughs> you know what? You know what's cool about owning a gym like this and doing what you guys are doing. One thing that I miss, and we talked about this because we don't have any desire to open a gym to make money. But one thing that we all talk about missing is having a gym like this around. It keeps the your community. finger. It keeps your finger yeah. on the pulse of fitness. You're not. You're not separated from it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get to be out here and talk to the people and see them train and yeah. just ke- ke- keeps it real. Well, initially when, when uh, I first thought thought about opening a gym, I was like. It, the idea was like, I'm just going to open a place where I could film content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. So mm-hmm. initially it was like, I just want to have this for myself so I can film content. Then it's like, well, we're making something really fun. Cool. Might as well have people come be a part of it. But the goal wasn't like, oh, we want to have a gazillion members and like all this shit. It was just more like have a dope place so like mm-hmm. I could film some crazy shit out and have fun and like have guests and like film videos and shit. Oh, what, well, I lo- what I love that you flipped on its head Totally, is totally different approach. We all noticed it right what, away. What you did, that's really smart. And I will, if it hasn't paid off already, it will continue to I pay foresee off. this being more of a trend. You'll is see other people allowing, do allowing people to have the cameras and do all that shit in here and oh, video themselves. Because that's everyone's doing that now. Well, that's I mean, that's how I build everything that I have. Well, I, it'd be silly if I had a gym and I was like, don't film shit. It, don't yeah. you think it's crazy that all these other but gyms all are that way? All corporations won't. Yeah, all the other right? gyms. I, well, it's, I, just, I think I it's crazy, but I get it because it's like, it's all liability shit. Sure. It's like, because totally. we started initially, and obviously everyone's going to steal this fucking idea. Shout out to all the dick riders who like to copy the name of my gym. They know exactly who they are. Uh, you're a piece of shit if you ever listen to this and you know it. Uh, anyways, so you you have a thing built off of like... You had someone bite the name? Like purely the name, not Zoo, Pretty right? much. No, really? no, no. Yeah. Wow. No, nah, pretty much. I, I wow. Do. Pretty much. Imagine this. The most popular word in fitness... Or is it 200? Listen, listen. Is it even imagine the this. same like logo? No, no, no. Really? Imagine uh. this. What's the most popular word in fitness? What's the most popular word in fitness? No, no, no. Or, or it's shredded? It's, no, no, no. Fitness. Like fitness. fitness. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And then, and then they put a. Uh, what's what? What's what's unique about our gym? What do you think? What do you in the in the name? Not this part. The zoo. Oh, not that culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because so he decided cause, he was yeah. like, oh, uh, uh, okay. and then and it's funny because then like there's wood in the gym too. And there's wood in the gym. The, the, no, not it's just, also funny because we had a wood, conversation. Hold on, we had wood. a fucking conversation. <laughs> Eight months before we opened this motherfucking gym with the same motherfucker <laughs> oh, who then I moved see. out of L.A. to go open a gym somewhere else. Oh, wow. We had a conversation oh. before we opened this fucking gym. I said if he gets a bulldog, I'm, I'm probably going to go pee. He'll probably ass. get a bulldog. I'll, I'll probably go pee. <laughs> yeah. I, I have two, but I think I had a first. Mine are six yeah. and four, bro. Uh, we got reclaimed wood, too. Got just so, yeah. <laughs> so what was the question again? What was the question again? Let's talk about people biting people's shit, bro. Oh, my God. No, I can't. I can't. I don't want to get there so we're, we're okay we're without, without rolling i guess names that are here are these people that are do you see this does this happen to you 
a lot. I mean, you are very original in a lot of the things that you did for sure. This 100%. happened from the beginning. From the very beginning, the whole I was the first person on Instagram to sell online coaching. Okay, so I'm going to call you out on something right now. Go ahead. Okay, because uh, you're the only person to block me. And the only reason why, <laughs> like, wait, like years ago, Whoa. years ago, this kind of, you know, what is yes. your thing? Yes. Booyah. Yes. Okay. Well, I to... bet you I know why. Okay. So, well, I figured it was. You probably dick right in my shit. No. Because no, no, that's no, why I block no, people. No, no, no definitely no, no. not. Okay. Okay. But, go ahead. Yeah, I'm as original as they come, bro. Okay. Okay. So, but I figured, because I was like, okay, maybe he, at that time. This too, had to be like five years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was like five years ago. I had just found you. And what I, w- I was like, dude, this dude is, you're built like, we're, I'm 6'3". I was 240 pounds, 6'3". And I'm competing. And I see you jumping out of the pool. And that's how I came across your stuff. And I, I was following you. And then I got blocked. And I thought, oh, maybe it was a mistake. And then I tried to add a bunch of times. And the- what? Did you say anything to me? No. That's, and I'm not, <laughs> dude, I'm not a troll. I'm not someone who does anything. That was what's so crazy was, I was like, I wonder, but I thought, well, you're maybe too handsome. maybe because he sees me in fitness. And he <laughs> no. sees that I'm a guy who's built like him. So, okay, were were you online a- coaching? I, I did online coaching. Okay, so there was a time. Okay, let me. Exp- I want to explain this. What happened? There, and this was this was the younger okay. me. Explain yourself, son. This is the younger me. I want to explain this. Is, I want to explain this. This is the younger really me. You would, you would, love, you would love, like, me, bro. This is like he's pretty nice listen, guy. Listen, you I don't fucking love chance. me, dude. Listen, listen I don't. Chance. No, I, I love you. The thing is, I never met you. You're awesome as fuck. <laughs> like right now, I, have to, I already, I, I already love you. So oh, listen, yeah. though, uh, there was a time when I first started this whole online coaching thing, and. People who were kind of close to me, like I just noticed, like I, I made like I was the first person. I'm not saying people didn't train people online before. Right. Before they called it like virtual coaching, people did mm-hmm. it on websites, mm-hmm. and right, right, competition shit. So I coined this like online coaching, and I had little. I used, I was like one of the first people ever to make little Instagram squares. This was before stress. This was before anything existed, like marketing wise. Yeah, I made Instagram squares like online coaching, did giveaways. Did the very first giveaway with Instagram Fitness, which later on Shreds bought the account. It's a piece of shit now. And, and to but, to add to Brad's thing. Back when Instagram first started, when the rest of us were just editing pictures and posting on Facebook or using it as like a filter thing, he was telling me then, he's like, dude, you got to start marketing stuff through your, your Instagram. And then he, he was already starting the coaching. Thing. He's like, yeah. he's like, you should start doing the coaching thing. Like yeah. you're a bodybuilder. Like, really he, like shut up. He was, Instagram. yeah. And I was, was like, before anyone was on Instagram, really yeah. before Instagram was on, well, I, it was even on Android. Yeah. I was, I was still working on my MySpace then. So I hadn't even, uh, everyone was on Facebook. Facebook. Everyone was on Facebook, filtering yeah. stuff, putting on Facebook. No one used Instagram. Yeah. Right, right. And I read about it, knew when it was going to be popular. I was like, this is going to be the fucking wave. This is going to change everything. So I, I, cause I wanted to be on Twitter back in the day. I was like, how could I make a business on Twitter? Cause my old goal was like, I want to be able to sit at home and play video games and chill and make money at home. Yeah. That was my goal. I want to play video games. <laughs> I swear to God, it's fucking crazy, right? Which I mean, it's anyways, cool. it's, yeah. yeah, that was a goal of mine I'm for a while. That's so all right. There's nothing wrong so with that goal. I started doing this and I, I was the first person to just give away online coaching on Instagram fitness. And then next thing you know, it was like everybody. Oh, wow. Everybody was cop. I'm talking about like copying word for word, like advertise, like type of shit. Everyone would copy the way that I would post captions, like the lines that I would use, everything. And I was just like, I got to the point where I was like, I was seeing it, and I was like, block, block, <laughs> block, block. And you were probably just one of them. No, I and later that. on, I, I got believe. two dickheads too. If they ever listen to this podcast, two dickheads. One knows exactly who he is because he lived with me for a while. Another one, they used to work together. They came back later and they were doing the same shit and they told me like, yeah, we copied all your shit. <laughs> back in the day wow so it was like people confirming constantly confirming and it was just like i was like fuck it i, I got mad but see i want to explain something to you guys i was younger and right. i learned it like at some point that's flattering now and he's still immature fucking, as fuck I'm still he immature was younger as fuck, then so. but it just doesn't matter <laughs> like i found myself trying to like combat these things and trying to like but the thing is if someone's it was a good idea right? yeah and i can't be like this is only mine right, it right. doesn't work that way yeah. and at the time i was just i, I guess i was bummed out because i felt like I was doing all this and I was thinking of all these creative things and everyone was just like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to jack that. That's a good idea. I'm going to put my name on <laughs> yeah, it. Oh, that's yeah. a good I'll idea. T- I'll t- and t- it's still fucking happening. Yeah. 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 Well, but I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll sorry. tell you what was a, it's like a paradigm shattering moment for me was when I learned that when people start to copy some of the stuff I say and whatever, it actually makes uh, – it increases the value of what I do because all, a lot of the people know that I was the first one. So I like it. Yeah. I love it. The when people, people that really that. care know you're the OG. And yeah. it actually, really it'll care. actually make you. What's your ex- Instagram? Sorry. Well, it's mine. It's mine. Pop Adam. But it used to be we love to hate Adam. So back when I when I followed yeah. you way back then, it was we love to hate Adam. Reason probably why. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I, well, he's I hate this fucking hate Adam. Adam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I love hate this guy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Block this bitch. I'm I'm connected on on your other two. I could put your original. Yo, that is funny. Look it. See. <laughs> straight block. Straight, straight. You don't have any straight. posts still. No, no, no that's blocked. he's unblocked right there. <laughs> Can you <laughs> unblock him on yeah. the show? All your other, I'm connected. I'm, I'm make him so happy. Look, I'm unblocking. So happy. Okay, we're friends now. Yo, that's so funny. Why did I do that? 
You must. You must. No, you had to, totally you not. Did, I was sort of. Do God. I strike you as that guy? But what, no. it, what it does make sense is exactly what you're saying. Was yeah. you were probably going through something at a time. You probably came across yeah. my page. Maybe I had a post similar to something right, you did, right. and then you probably said either Fuck that this or guy. it was one of your one of your half nude po- photos on the swing. Yeah, which is funny like though, because now it's this ironic is that yeah. I've met you, and before you even brought up any of that, I was already like, I like these guys. I was in my head like, I like these guys. <laughs> and that's the thing about the internet is like people just. It's so different when you meet someone yeah. in person. Right, right. And 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Everybody's like <clears throat> changed our mind. We've, like met, met we've met so many people that we thought like, oh, these people are going to be freaking awesome. We're going to love them. And then we meet them and we leave and we're like, oh, God, God there's damn, nothing there. That yeah. is a fucking yeah. moron. What the fuck was that? And we can't stand them. And then there's been people we meet where we're like, this guy's a douchebag. We meet them. Or like that dude is is brilliant, or that person has a lot more to offer than we yeah than we yeah, thought. Yeah, or like Brad, genuine. Yeah. It's, uh, well, like fucking, this guy's gonna be a douchebag, and then they're like, man, he's he's pretty cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, well, I like okay. it. I, I, I go through that on the daily. I wake well, up, I'm like, <laughs> fuck. Knowing how your guys' background in fitness, and you know, walking into your gym, you can feel the energy in here. Yeah. You know, being able to great music by the way. Being able to be yeah. very open on a I'm podcast and all that stuff. I mean, I was genuine. Running, I was running very very genuine. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it's good that there's you. It's great that there's more people in fitness like that because there's too many of the other ones. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Too many of the garbage I, out there. Too much. I appreciate that, man. And that's something that like it means a lot to me and, and also why I can understand how anybody would get frustrated when somebody like kind of copies your stuff because, you know, like Brad mentioned with the gym here, whenever I sat down with Brad and we were talking about you know the way we wanted to do this and we never brought up like, okay, this is how we can make a lot of money. It was like, okay, well, let me look Let me look through like our bookkeeping, our numbers, and like mm-hmm. how much we're going to invest, and like the benefits we're going to get out of this with like a place to film for content, and then like something that we're like, oh, you know, we can have people here. We need to make the culture, the environment, all this stuff. We were at the point where we're like, you know, let's just, let's figure out a way that we can at least just break even. Like, let's not lose money on this, but like, we don't care to make money. And I think because of that, we like, we never sacrificed anything that we wanted in the gym or in our gym. We never said like, oh, well, you know, if we, if we do this, then we'll make more money, but it's going to require us acting like every other dickhead gym there is. Mm-hmm. Like every other, oh, you got to sign this long contract yeah. because we want your money for a whole year. Oh, you want to cancel, you got to pay a fee. Well, or, there's, you, there's, you know, there's really two models in fitness that can be successful. One is much more difficult to do than the other. So the two are, one, you have a cheap-ass membership fee. You got a lot of equipment. Yeah, and your goal is to sign people up and then for them not to use it anymore. That's that's the that's, Planet that's Fitness model. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. 24 Fitness model, right? The other model is to develop a culture yeah. within your fi- yeah. within your facility that makes people <laughs> want to show up. There's the word. Now everyone <laughs> uses fucking word in everything. It's on my book. I already now saw it. Tons, tons of, of, of shit. I've seen it everywhere already. But the, but the difficult thing about that is Fuck. it takes Coach actual word. work. And you know who did? Saying? I'll give you an example of someone or a company or business that did that very well. CrossFit. Say what you will yeah, about them. Sure. No, no, CrossFit a developed doubt. a culture, Without and that was doubt. extremely successful. Yeah. And they're charging. I mean, the well, culture top sucks, dollar. But uh, yeah, I get it. Well, yeah, it's yeah, their yeah. culture, right? Yeah. I want to say powerful. something about CrossFit in general. As much as I, I'm like, it's fucking whatever. They changed fitness yeah. absolutely because yeah. they made all these big gyms be like, oh, oh we need a functional Barbaries? area. Oh, we shit. need a fucking turf, and they're, yeah. th- they're people are their squatting, gyms like, people are deadlifting. Yeah. nobody yeah. was doing that. Like twenty, some twenty fours have a tire in their gym with a turf. Almost now. all like, of them are converting. Really, and you guys made, have it that made I was asking popular. for that yeah. shit a long yeah. time ago. Nobody listened. Like it made real. I'm not saying CrossFit's not real shit, but they made all this other shit that was just like. Stone yeah. Age, way I'll, more popular. I'll tell you guys what, because we come from a similar industry uh, or similar side of fitness as you, right? When we first came out and we, uh, one of our first episodes was why Mind Pump doesn't CrossFit. And we actually got contacted by their headquarters and went back and forth. <laughs> oh, we yeah. did a second episode talking shit. But now, three years later, we've met with and talked with some of the leaders in CrossFit. CrossFit is evolving quite a bit. So you've got people like Kelly Starrett in there who's talking yeah. about mobility. We've Rob talked Wolf. to, yeah, Rob Wolf and, you know, the Barbell Shrug guys and, uh, beyond the barbell, those guys and Jason Kalipa and these these dudes and these people, these leaders are really starting to change all the kind of bad stuff that's start all the bad. It's still hella fucked up though. It you know, is, but yeah, it's starting yeah. to you're it's starting to see the cream up. is rising to the to the top. You know, with I, uh, I would definitely uh, say the people that started it are still you know pushing on evolving. Well, it's like anything else, and and you got, and you know this when you build something like and it's when, it, when it's in its infancy, it's when it's most like you and what you want, and when it gets fucking huge, then it's like you can't help it. Right, it yeah. gets so massive, but, and people are so disconnected from the the, the people who originated. I I don't think they plan for it to look like yeah. this no. no yeah I uh, I still like making fun of CrossFit because it's like so something you could do it's not hanging fruit at the same time though like I've seen some of the elite level CrossFitters that are stronger than a lot of powerlifters and they could do things that like a lot of even elite athletes can't do 
And so like, there's no need to hate on CrossFit. And some people say like, Oh, well, what about all the injuries that the regular people get and stuff? I'm like, there's a bunch of people that are into powerlifting that don't know what the hell they're doing. They yeah. hurt themselves all the time right. too. All the so time. like just the gym in general, you know, if, if you're, yeah. If, so I like, I joke around about CrossFit. I no, don't actually hate CrossFit. The, but it's, the biggest jab you know, that I, I've always had. And what I tell people is that the only problem is that it should just be called a sport. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. If it's a sport, it's just like football, soccer, yeah. basketball. You can get in shape doing all those sports. Yeah. It's probably not the best thing for you long term to always be doing, but absolutely you can. And if you're yeah. passionate about it and you love doing it, who am I to say? Well, so wait, what do they call it then? CrossFit sport. Well, yeah. right? they should a, they should yeah. call it a sport. Right, right, right sport now, sport should yeah. be attached to the name. Yeah, because what you gotcha. were having is you had CrossFit boxes, and then they'd have you know you know soccer moms and you know weekend right. warriors going in there, and they're doing. You know, that's Olympic mostly lifts. what's in there. They're doing yeah. Olympic lifts to time. Yeah, they're telling like you the best way to yeah. get in shape, like, destroying fitness their wise. Yeah, yeah just like, like I don't know about that. But, I, don't even, I don't even know if I've talked about. It. I, I did it. I did it for a few months. Yeah, you, was, you, you, well, you mentioned yeah. that not today, but in another podcast. Oh, another podcast. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it makes yeah, sense because yeah. being that you're the Mason was unhappy with this gender. Like an A B right now. Well, I still do admit. I wanted to see what it was like on the other side. Hi, my name is Mason. I used to be a Hey, but hey, but let's let's be real. They brought. I'll tell you what uh, before CrossFit started getting popular when we were managing gyms back in you know the late 90s early 2000s there was like you'd have a 30 40,000 square foot facility you'd have one squat rack yeah. and nobody would fucking touch it oh right. dust all would of, be on it all of a sudden yeah. people are squatting and deadlifting and you know and yeah. you got to give credit where credit's due yeah, and there was no women and women know? were are we lifting weights yeah, yeah. hard right? and they heavy. brought women they and men together get, yeah like, in the only Lulu way and CrossFit. Yeah. CrossFit is cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like CrossFit. Yeah. That, that, that's probably the biggest thing I would say for for CrossFit is it's put more barbells in more hands. Yeah, in yeah. the last ten mm-hmm. years, probably mm-hmm. than than any other any other niche sport. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I just brought light to to I would say barbell work yeah. Yeah. in general. And yeah. what's cool? What's cool about fitness is you can go in these different worlds and kind of dive in and talk to these people, and it's fucking fast. Like we we interviewed people from the kettlebell sport. I don't know if you guys are familiar with kettlebell sport, kettlebell yeah. competition. I mean, very different. It's very uh, underground right now. I mean, but, yeah. very, very tight knit culture and community, uh, and that's. I mean, they, was done, it like search for this RKS RCS? Yeah. Uh, there's different certifications. There's like the hard style, yeah. and, the, and the, this is more endurance based. So they do like long cycles for ten minutes. Snatch, snatches, 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 ten minutes. Like ten minutes. It's fucking brutal. I mean, uh, it's a brutal sport. It's really not interesting to watch, which is <laughs> it's tough. You know, it's a tough thing because it's like you go as a spectator and it's like. Okay, you know, for ten minutes you're just watching them do the same thing, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, the the community very much resembles what CrossFit was when it first started. So we paid attention to that right away. Like, wow, these people are really tight mm-hmm. together, and they yeah. all support each other, and they clap for each other when they're on all that shit. So, Unlike yeah. the fitness social media community, right? Which everybody right. hates. They're all each like, other, I'm, yeah. oh, he's fuck that guy. I'm so much better than you. I gotta stand you. in front of Dude, him. I, I, gotta I, I fucking... share this on the show, and you probably remember this also. Being and competing, I'll never forget. Like so, I competed too, by the way. Oh, you did too. Yeah, I did men's physique shit. What? Yeah, when way back you? in the day. No shit. <laughs> yeah, 2011. Brad, Brad started doing it like I was when the it, first. You guys are so much the same. Like, so I've Steve Cook, Cook Craig it's, it's Perso, all back in the I think, oh, yeah. I think Brad did like the so, first show that douchebag. was like the first men's physique so show. All those guys, there, right? Yeah. That's you. Yeah, all those you, guys. You, yeah, <laughs> dude, you can say whatever you want on my bumper show. You say whatever the fuck you want to say, man. But what what I thought was crazy, so. You know, I've trained thousands of people in all my years of training. And, of course, you deal with all these insecurities, body dysmorphia, food issues, and poor relationship with exercise. I got to competing, and I get backstage, and I'm, and I'm, I'm meeting all these guys and I'm like, and girls, and I'm blown away by all the eating disorders, how, how many of them don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're just oh, being, man. Yeah. And I would, it, it would, it's worse in the competitive world. So the people, oh, yeah. that, the, people that are, oh, yeah. the people that are on the magazines, the people that are telling are the most every, unhealthy. Are the people the that are most unhealthy with the most fucking issues, which that just blew my mind. Because I was like, yeah. I already knew it was bad. But then I thought, okay, here I am. And especially when I was, at the, I was at the amateur level first. And I was like, oh, well, maybe that's because these are amateurs. Maybe the pros, like, they, <laughs> they know their shit. I get to the pro <laughs> level, and I'm like... Fuck, dude, the pros are Whoa. just as stupid as did these they guys. they laugh at you for eating salad? Oh, bro, it's salad. Just, oh. Did you, did so you, you, salad. Did no you ever get to a point where, especially when you met the pros that didn't know what they were doing, yeah. and you were like, holy shit, it's purely just a genetic response to drugs that got them here. And then you look at the sport as a whole, and you're like, holy fuck, this is just a genetic response to drugs, and it doesn't, nothing else really matters. Like dude. the nutrition, the work ethic, all that stuff. I'll take somebody with phenomenal genetics, pump them full of drugs, and feed them pizza, 
and they'll smash on people and still turn pro. Bro. <laughs> it's like, how does that make the average person Let's talk feel? about the like, cycles that you know? people are running. Like, so in I'm, physique. So I'm, yeah. I'm in men's physique. So let me tell you, like, my, let me tell you about my yeah. steroid cycle oh my through God. men's physique. So I'm already somebody who dabbled with this when I was in my early 20s. So my, How old are you now? So I'm 35. Okay. 36. Jesus. You, today, today, you I'm birthday. Today. Today. Birthday. Yeah. 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 Oh, happy birthday. Hey. Birthday podcast. Podcast first. He needs to do shots. I think that's my cue then. Yes. Yes, bro. So I get I get in there at... I get in at, uh, you know, like I'm competing. It's what I'm 30 years old and I'm amateur level. Now, I, I fucked around with steroids when I was in my 20s. So I go get my, I go get tested. I'm like 200 something free tests. So I'm like flatlined. Wow. So I get on HRT and then I decide I'm going to compete. And I'm like, okay, if well, I'm going to compete, and by the way, I do not have like a bodybuilder's body type whatsoever. I should be fucking swimming in a pool. I have <laughs> skinny ass legs, little tiny waist. So I get in there and I go, okay, for sure, I'm going to have to probably bump my dose up. So at this time, I'm taking like 125 milligrams every two weeks. Like the normal just dose. Just a replacement. Just a replacement. Yeah, HRT. But now I'm going to get into competing. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to ramp myself up to like 250, 300 milligrams per week. So I'm taking that and I, I start blowing up and I'm eating more. I, I go do my first show. I take fourth the first show. The second show, or the first show after I take fourth, this is great too, because I smoked everybody. Uh, they told me my conditioning was too. They were like, you're too ripped. You're too shredded. So I'm like, okay, come in softer. Like, that's easy. So I came in the next show like seven pounds heavier. Then they tell me I'm too fucking big. Okay. Yeah, right? Hold on a sec. I just want to say something about the competition industry. It's fucking bullshit. It is. Okay. It is. It's, 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 it's subjective. Wait till so, I finish this story. Because I, right, I, sorry, I actually, one of, the, one of the owners who will remain nameless on the show right now, I got a chance just like a month ago to sit and talk to him. And he told me a story of the story I'm telling you right now of what happened behind the scenes with all the judges. Okay. So my very first, my very I got first stories like this too. Okay, so my very first sure. show, I come, I come out, and it's not even close, bro. I waited to get on the amateur show until I was like had a, a pro physique. All my peer buddies are all pros, and they're like, bro, get on the stage, you're gonna win right away. So all everyone's like, this dude's gonna win first place right away. So I get, I get there, and for sure, I, I smoke everybody conditioning wise, symmetry. And uh, they don't even have me in the top five. I don't even make the top five call-ups. I'm standing over on the side, looking at the top five. The two guys closest to me don't even have abs, no separate. And I'm fu- I'm inside. I'm going like, oh, this shit is corrupt. And everyone had told me. Right. And I actually was on this mission to find out for myself. No coach, no team, doing this all myself. I'm going to find out for myself how political all this shit is. And so I get in there, and I'm and I'm standing on stage. And I'm sure the people, that my friends could see how fucking pissed I am. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I go, that was the morning, right? So it's prejudging. Night show comes around. All of a sudden, I pop up in fourth place. Now I'm in fourth. And I'm getting ready to walk on stage. And one of my, my buddies does uh, all the whatever trafficking for everybody, right, to get yeah. on and off stage. And he's like, hey, bro, you took fourth. And I'm like, no, dude, I wasn't even on the top five. He's like, no, 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 they bumped you up to fourth. And so I, I take fourth place. Long story short, I go on my career. I go pro, this and that. Just a month ago, I'm talking to the, the head owner of, of the shows, of this show, right? And him and I are chopping up back and forth. He's like, man, I, I recognize you. I know you. I'm like, oh, yeah, I have this podcast. I'm thinking that maybe that's where he remembers me from or something. And he's like, he's like, no, no. And I tell him, and he's like, oh, Adam Schaefer. Yeah, you won USA's. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I know I know who you are. I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, your first. He's a like, man, Sandy loved you, this and that. And he starts name dropping all the people who didn't like me. And he goes, I'll never forget the first day you came on stage. You came on stage, and right away, Sandy was talking about how much she loved you and so-and-so was super anti. Now, if you guys don't know how judging works for competing, there's a head judge. Head judge decides who the five that are coming out. And then the other judges all score them and decide that. So if the head judge doesn't put the top five in there, the other judge don't get a chance to score those those top five in that category right there. Right. So the head judge, is that's who didn't like me, doesn't even put me in the top five. And all all the rest of them are all leaning over and they're talking to each other like, what the, yeah, f- what's what, up? What the fuck? This guy's like way beyond anyone else. So he tells me that they afterwards, between the shows, they're all arguing. They're all sitting in the office and they're debating this. And, and they're like, you know, we need to stop this somewhere. Guys are too shredded. They're not, they're not, you, this is not, they're not they're supposed to look like this. And I'm going like, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm on 125 milligrams of testosterone right now. I bumped up to 250. I'm like, I, I'm not that crazy. I just came in condition for an yeah. amateur. And then they end up bumming me. So, that happened to me. I go to USA's. That's where I go pro. And and when I get on the pro circuit, I'm waiting to meet these pro guys thinking that, okay, finally I'm going to meet dudes that fucking know their shit. And it was just as bad. The the two hours of cardio every day, uh, running crazy cycles of clin, over a gram of testosterone a week. And I'm like, dude, we're men's physique. I got to share one of these stories. I think dude. mine's better than yours. Oh, let's as hear it. As this competition <laughs> shit goes. 
Um, 2000, so I was one of the first few competitors like in the men's physique thing. Yeah, I yeah. remember. Like literally, I did the first show in Southern California, and I did the first USA's. Was that Anaheim? In in USA. Oh, Anaheim I already High know School. where you're going with this. So the person who won that year was probably okay. <laughs> so the person who won that year in my class was Nick Garden. He was a trainer at the gym um, at the 24 Hour Fitness that I worked at at the time. And long story short, I my very first show, I got eighth. I just took off my shirt, ate pizza, and got a tan. All right, terrible. Mm-hmm. Got eighth. I was like, "Oh, this is what you need to do." I remember, he was eating a block of cheese. He's like, "Yeah, oh, I'm I was a keto. Key, key. It was off too." I didn't <laughs> Anyways, I, like, I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Definitely not how it works. <laughs> so this is really good. Though. I think you're doing something wrong, bro. <laughs> For sure, I learned a lot since then. Anyways, um, it, so I, I do my second show. I smoke them. I get to San Diego. I, I'm like, I win, and I win overall. And then I'm like, "Oh, they're gonna you're gonna do USA's next week or two weeks or something like that." Because it was two weeks before, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do it." So I go to do it. Um, I get second place when they only gave out because they I, every show after that they gave out two pro cards. So that was the very first USA's they gave out one. Yeah, and I got second place. Mm. Oh. And I'm like, every, like people are booing, literally booing. Like, and I'm up there like, what the fuck? Like, and then for like three four months on Facebook because that was still what was popular at the time. Um, people were messaging me like, man, you got fucked. Like every message, man, you got fucked. Man, you got fucked. And I was just like. Man, I got fucked. <laughs> like, so yeah, you're right. Yo, so yeah. I wasn't popular. Yeah. Okay. Later on, I started getting more popular on the internet because Instagram started popping. I was the first person with 10,000 followers. People started contacting me. This lady, um, who's not going to rename name this because fuck them at this point, <laughs> Venus, uh, Venus something. She's from San Diego. She told me that, oh, the reason why you didn't win is because she had a little physique. She was creating this little physique thing, and Nick was one of her people. And by the. There's nothing wrong with Nick or any or whatever, right? He stopped competing after. They just didn't even compete anymore. Yeah. But she said, you didn't win because like, that was my guy to win. Mm-hmm. Right? And you were in his class. Sorry. That's and then, and then it came like literally this serious. Yeah. But, but join my team and like and I got win. you. Right? And I got kind of like, you know what? Fuck this. Right? So I think I did like one more show, Miami Nationals. But you don't win because like, you're on the East Coast. And if you're on the East Coast, you got to you basically suck East Coast judge dick or some bullshit or like fancy pants them or spend more time on the East Coast and do more shows and pay your dues and all this fucking bullshit that these people talk about, which is ridiculous. Because it has nothing to do with dues. It has to do with money. Yeah. And it has to do with business. Because when I started getting popular on the internet, that's when all these motherfuckers were like, come do my show. Yeah, of course. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this shit. You'll win. You come do my show. You'll win. So I went. I did a show. And you better believe, before I walk out on that stage, oh, wow. the guy standing up here, the guy who owns the show, the guy who is the promoter, the show owner, the guy who's the head judge as well, who goes, you're going to win before I come. I look good. Not, I'm not saying I look bad. Right. There was guys who could have beat me. Like, I look great. They, you, could just, you can be like, oh, yeah, those guys didn't show up in the top five, right? So, again, I have, I have pictures. I can show you this. But Dude, did you tell it? Have you told this story before? I never told this story. No. Oh, my oh, God. So he told oh, you you won before even. Absolutely. I'm walking on stage. As I go to walk on stage, he's like, number one. He's in this little booth thing up here. He's like, number one, number one. I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, number one. But, <laughs> but anyway, it, but it, when I did it, I was like, I did look good. And I, it's not that I didn't deserve it, but it was bullshit. Right. So I experienced firsthand, no one gave a fuck about me, even though I looked great and should have won. And everybody's opinion was like, man, you should have won. And then everyone started like, oh, that's the guy with the followers. Because like, if he says, he, you know, you do the show, then the yeah, whole idea is like, it used to be magazines and magazine money and promotion money for magazines, right? Dropping bars out here. Anyways, yeah. oh, so it used to be like, okay, who are who's paying the most to this show? Right. What sponsors are they? Who are their athletes? Yeah, make sure they win. Now it's like, oh, this motherfucker got a million followers on Instagram, 300,000, 400,000. Like, shit, we should... Look. They ask you now, yeah. how many fucking followers do you have on oh, the fucking ask social yeah. media? Uh, they ask you now. Of course they do. That's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck that. does that mean? Yeah. What? Yeah. So listen. That's your currency. Now it's just about numbers because you got. I want to put this in perspective. It's like, if you have some dude with a million followers saying, I won this show. Blah, 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 yeah, and then it's more like, people more kids it. are going to think, oh shit, Brad competes. He won that show. I need to compete. That's how I can become popular like Brad. So then you go, you go now. The, all the fees are fucking. It started at like fifty. Now it's like three hundred to just to just be a part of it to do one show, and it's like one hundred fifty, maybe three hundred now a year to be a part of this organization to do any shows. So you pay a yearly, and then you pay a showly, and then you pay like a photographer fee. If you want your photos for that show, and then and you divisions, pay like a d- to fucking different divisions. Different, or different. It's fucking bullshit. Bro. So it's like if you pay into that shit, you're like, oh, I'm the guy, I win the show. 
like they're gonna they're only gonna reward people who have followers so they further their business because it's marketing because it's a business because it's a brand bro it's so and it is fucking crazy it is beyond yeah. crazy and dirty yeah. and you have so many people who fucking kill themselves yeah. oh man I just you know they said I gotta get my stage presence better I so I gotta work on my posing oh my so God. they're all like this with their fucking hands and shit and it's fucking crazy to me because they're lying to people they are just so they get more money Dude. it's period just about money you got people who are killing themselves dieting doing all the fucking oh, drugs doing all this shit creating metabolic themselves. damage destroying fucking the testosterone. themselves yeah. Right. Yeah. Because they think, oh, they said I got to be a little bit harder, so like I'm gonna do a little bit more cardio, do some fasted cardio. I'm gonna do, and it's like, no, motherfucker, they don't give a shit about you. Right. That's their reason to tell you, hey, fuck off. We we, we got who we want. Sorry. Good luck next time. Maybe if you get a million followers, then we'll fuck with you. Dude, I had no yeah. idea that you went through all that stuff. So that's my, your story is literally like my story. <laughs> I had time. So yo, you missed. It. I just went off on the. We, I just went off. We all we all know uh, <laughs> Evo Gin, and we know that company, and so they they like own Sacramento. So that's NorCal for me. So those are the shows. That's the circuit that I would go through. I, I want to make one thing really clear. People hear this. That there, I'm not saying though that there aren't competitors who don't deserve to win. No, that they don't look great because sure. I do believe a lot of them look great. But I just want to. I want the general population to know that there's more. Because I don't want people going into a show thinking, or like, I can get popular doing this, or like, this is what I need to do to be popular, because that popular guy does it. Like, I built my popularity when I stopped competing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? right? And then I focus on building my brand, or what made me me, like focusing on being Bradley Martin, quote unquote, whatever the fuck that means. I focused on that, and was like, I'm not going to try and make all these people happy. I'm going to try and make myself happy. And I just want to point that out, that I'm not saying that people who win don't deserve to win. No, there's, they all, there's exceptions to the rule. Yeah. There's yeah. always exceptions I'm just to the saying rule. there's just like... The majority of it, though, it needs yeah, to be said. Though it needs to be said because a lot of kids enter into this world already yes. insecure, not feeling good about themselves. They get into this world, guys and girls, damage their metabolisms, destroy their hormone levels, take all this crazy gear, thinking that they can continue to progress when, in fact, they probably don't have the genes or whatever. And I, just and you got themselves. people filling them with bullshit like you just need horrible a stage presence, hardness, be drier, whatever it is, and it's really just so they could tell you. Whatever, so, so you they stop give, asking so they them give you something else to do to get you to come back to another show. Exactly. They, yeah. To the point where my very first show, my head was hanging low. I mean, everyone told me I should have won first place. I'll never forget. I'm walking in the elevator, and my head's down. Judge walks up behind me, puts my hand. He goes, hey, kid, you got a great physique. I said, oh, yeah, the judges didn't think so. He goes, don't listen to that. Just come back again. And I'm like, what do you mean? Just come back again. He's like, no, they, they told me I was too conditioned. He's like, no, no, no. You have a, you have a pro physique. You look great, kid. Just come out. They just want to see you more times. Yeah, it's like so. Pay us more. Just pay us some more money. <laughs> yeah. Really? Like, I, that's the thing. Is like it, that's what gets me. Is like I get it. It's a business, and I can respect a business. But like when you're abusing, what the fuck? When you're abusing, when you're abusing like people's like because that's the thing. And like everyone knows this. The thing everyone who competes yeah. they like they know you. You've heard this. If you compete, pay your dues. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Everyone knows this, and it's like, but no one. Everyone's so afraid to talk about like what's really going on. Because they're like they don't. They also don't want to offend the person who's going to judge them next time, and then, and then they go compete. You're net, they're going to blackball you. Like they would never let me compete again after saying that. Like, oh yeah. Oh, that guy's the devil. He <laughs> yeah, knows yeah. the truth. <laughs> yeah. And it's, so it's just like fuck, man. But you got these. That's the thing that gets me. You have yeah. people who like. Oh, but like if I just do this and try a little bit harder, I could be good. I'm like, no, you don't get it. Like it's not about that. Right. I bet you if you took time and got yourself popular on Instagram, you'd fucking win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that sad? That's yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's, so it's like, are you competing to be popular on Instagram or? A physique show. That's why I was like, you know, if I ever compete again, it's going to be in powerlifting. It's going to be something that's like something you did that's it subjective. or you did it. Exactly. Like you either win or you don't. Yeah, you made yeah. a shot or you didn't. Not yeah. like subjective where today we like this and that judge likes this and the East Coast judge like that and the West Coast judge like this. And that's that's what that whole industry is. Happy birthday. Sorry. Hey, I had to go off on yeah. that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, seeing that's what these guys went through. Happy like, birthday. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like seeing, you know, like computer competitors like you go through over the years. Uh, I was always waiting for that. Like, oh, I want, I'm not going to step on stage. So I'm like. You know, and at the time I was still figuring out food and all that. You know, I was like, I'm not gonna step on stage, so I like, I'm I'm gonna win a show. And just seeing it, what these guys went through and all that, that's, I mean, also, kind of the start of raw powerlifting. Seeing like Stan Efforting break records and this and that. That's what kind of started to get me into powerlifting more than anything. Yeah, was just seeing like, you know, people that I am like, these guys are showstoppers. These guys need to win shows. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, uh, so and so didn't like you because of this and that. I'm like, what what the fuck is going on here? Right. You know, that's what started getting me more into like powerlifting and just like you know also he just signed me up and was like oh, do, you guys, do you guys think it's getting worse do you think it's getting worse before it's getting better right now <laughs> what's that do you guys think you think it's getting worse before it's getting better well okay i want to say something so I'm gonna jack this. <laughs> yeah. um brandon helped coach brian who's a friend of ours who's not that like popping on the internet he's he's more popping now but he just won the mr physique olympia hmm. classic physique. classic physique sorry yeah. 
classic. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Brandon Fle- Brandon Flex or whatever. Right? It's just, no, 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 it's no, Breon. No. Breon Ansley. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So he that, just that won, and he's music. he's. So that gave me hope, honestly, because he wasn't that popping. Oh, and there was other guys up there who were more popping. Like he's was, still popping though. He's still got like at least. 20, no. 40,000 minimum. He's got more. Yeah, but there's people who are competing with who have a hundred, who have a million. Oh yeah, no, oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah, you no. know. Well, uh, I think, I think, I think it's gotten so obvious that, that they have like, to, yeah, they're like, fuck. Let's throw a but, twenty thousand person in there. <laughs> but this guy is, this guy is fucking undeniable. Yeah, yeah, no, he's. And I think so. Maybe true. you have to get that good. You have to be that undeniable that, like, this guy's fucking amazing. Oh like, wow. Yeah. So I we've I've known him before before he really even started competing. Oh, wow. He was always yeah. he was always phenomenal. Why isn't he competing? That's that's classic. Yeah, yeah, classic. That's bodybuilder, man. Well, he no, he, he was a, he was a pro bodybuilder, bodybuilder before he, was a he did classic. Oh, okay, yeah. but that's yeah. Great. So show him, show yeah. show me a different photo of him. We did a we did a podcast with him. Yeah. Go down more, a little more, a little more. It's just the one where he wins. Go down. Who's, go down. who's his coach? Oh, you oh, coach wow. him? Yeah. yeah. No shit, So bro. Brandon, just so you guys know, Brandon... Chris, uh, Chris Cormier does a lot of stuff with his training and his posing. I do his like nutrition and everything else. So Brandon has is the guy who's always helped me with my diet and all that shit, too. So that's the guy. So I built my online coaching based... Because I wasn't even thinking to go in that space. What motivated me to go in that space was when I got into competing. I was like, oh, man, there ain't, there's no good coaches. All the, like, and some of the <laughs> biggest name coaches that have huge teams... Are giving the fucking worst shit out. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, this is easy. This is easy pickings, dude. Mm-hmm. I'll teach a few people. I'll sh- show some people come up on stage. They'll not only will they look great, but they'll actually feel okay during their fucking yeah. dieting process. Right. They yeah. won't feel like a goddamn. That's martyr. something we were gonna get more back into, but like we've been so busy with everything That's else sure. we're doing with the gym that we've just mm-hmm. kind of like we put it to the side. Now are but, they get, are they getting? I, I like I don't. The few people that I do coach, I don't charge um, because I never wanted to do coaching as a profession myself, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it's allowed me to focus just purely on the coaching part of it because I don't have to worry about marketing myself. Mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about making money doing it. And so like, I don't want to advertise myself as a coach. I don't, I don't want people to hit me up because I tell That's just almost like everybody. No, I just, you know? I just helped a girl. I just but, did a girl, bikini girl for free like that. And like, don't tell anybody that I'm doing it. I don't need a bunch of DMS. I don't want to do this shit anymore. I have no desire to deal with fucking athletes, yeah. but there's a huge need for it, dude. Yeah, there's it a, you want to talk about this. Bus- you want to talk about business. And and also helping people because there's a huge need right now. Some of the biggest fucking teams are led by a bunch of fucking oh, douchebags yeah. giving really bad information. What? And and it's not it's it's so bad their fucking metabolisms up, dude. Yeah. Their fucking metabolisms up, and they're screwing these kids up. And so, you know, there's a there's a, there's a lot of money to be made, and there's a lot of people to help at the same time. Well, I, I like to be a little bit more. I don't want to even call it old school, but I have a different approach. In that, whenever I'm coaching somebody like like Breon, I've been working with him now for a few years. And the few other people that I coach, I try to be more of a mentor. Like I want to, I want them to actually learn. I'm not just going to tell you what to eat or what to do or this or that. Like I want you to understand it. I want you to be able to translate that onto others. And I tell people, okay. I was like, you Thank know, you. oh, we're going to get to finish this. All right, <laughs> yeah. right shit. <laughs> you guys are on it. Um, I smoked half of one of these before Thor Ragnarok and almost... Great like, movie. You know, like, fuck. Yeah. Great uh, movie. Hold on. I, got, I still got to go see that. Talk about it. Best one yeah. yet. So no spoilers. I, uh, yeah. I was, I, was trying, I was like, I almost fucked that up. I'm trying to get back on the <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Is that I, I just tell everybody that I help. I'm like, look, just pay it forward. You know, whether you're coaching somebody, you charge people for it, just make sure that you're giving them like the attention that, that they deserve, that they're paying mm-hmm. for. And if, if you want to help somebody that you're not, you know, billing, you're not charging them for it, then like pay that forward and tell them to do the same. Because I still think that when it comes down to it, I mean, being a bodybuilding coach and getting into the science and stuff of this, the academics aren't necessarily studying bodybuilding. No. You know, we're taking studies done in like old diabetics and trying to right. translate that to bodybuilding. Yeah. So we need to kind of stick together. And if we can do this pay it forward approach, then the whole industry gets smarter. Are they, yeah. are, 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 is the way competitors are using gear, is that starting to progress and change? Because for a while there got real kamikaze with like the doses and all that stuff. Are, are competitors now a little bit more finesse? And To be honest, I think that like since the internet age, since the forums started really kind of popping, people started being a little bit better with their health. Uh, mm-hmm. Before, like, steroids were talked about openly online. I feel like people were a little more, like, bro science with it, and then the doses were a little bit more absurd. Um, that said, I know people that are doing their first show or, or their second show on, like, the local level are taking more gear than some of the guys on the yeah. oh, We just talked you about know, that. So, like, we were just talking about that. that. You got a little bit of both. It really depends you know, on the person. You know, it's yeah. funny. We just did an episode on this where I was speculating because we all, we're all familiar with insulin resistance, right? When you, you, know, you eat too much, you know, too much sugar or your diet's really bad or whatever, and you start to develop insulin resistance, and eventually it turns into diabetes. The body uh, very likely can develop resistance to pretty much anything it's exposed to too much whether it's cortisol, which we see like an HPA axis dysfunction. But the other one is testosterone. 
And think about this. How many people do you guys know or competitors, whatever, that take these high doses of gear, no, never go off and just stop responding yeah. and end up having to take more and more and more gear? What's happening is their body is literally developing a resistance to testosterone, not unlike insulin resistance. And that's, I think, what you see a lot of with these – these guys that are just not going off this shit. Next thing you know, they're taking grams of you know testosterone and they're competing at the amateur. Oh, I coach so many. Just I coach the so many so amateur bodybuilders, women's bikini, men's physique that came to me from some other coach. And I, the very first thing they want to ask me is what you know, what cycle do I take, or this is what I'm taking. What else do I need to do? No, I'm good. good. And I'm like. Well, let's actually take all that shit out. Let's figure out how your body resp- responds to food, good programming, and then from there, if you really, because I'm not, I'm definitely not someone to tell someone don't, don't do this, don't do that. Like if you want to, it's your body. Like to each their own, right? I'm, that's how I feel. But I at least let me educate you and help you do this the right way. Like just stacking on stacking. I mean, guys and girls taking over a gram at the amateur level of men's physique. Like what the fuck? Yeah, crazy. Are you kidding me? I bumped up to 500 milligrams my second show because they told me I was too conditioned small. I thought, okay, I'll get bigger, right? I'll come in that way. Yeah. And they were like, oh, my God, you're way too massive. You're like over 15, 20 pounds a show off of 500 milligrams. I had to back it off because I was like, Jesus, dude, I can't get any bigger because I'm going to have to go into the class. Yeah, I think the- when, we, when, we, when you hear about you know, certain people are saying, oh, I can just take a little bit and get way bigger, and this guy has to take more or whatever, a lot of it has to do with receptor density, the, yeah. the, your ability just to respond to testosterone. And like I was saying earlier, I think a lot of people are just taking so much all the time they're developing a resistance to it. So all they're doing is they're increasing their side effects. Yeah. You know, just getting one. Well, that, that was a couple of points I want to make to, to what you guys are both saying is that like the, you know, everybody has a different response to it. So some people on 500 milligrams can, can get Olympia level. Mm-hmm. Some people need 1500 milligrams to get the same type of response. But th- there's a, a correlation with the dosage of side effects. That's kind of the standard for everybody. Sure. And, uh, you know, there's been jokes about like genetics. You know, we talk genetics. We could talk about muscle shape, like the the sure. natural. Sure, but there's genetics somebody, for right? steroids too. Yeah, there's a genetic response to steroids, but there's also like maybe somebody's genetic strength is people that have the ability to abuse the shit out of the the gear to get muscle growth without getting the crazy health side. Sure. Because I know a few people that are like that. I I don't want to put them on blast. That they I've seen them literally take like two grams of test, fifteen hundred milligrams of trend, and like crazy absurd orals, and like literally abusing the shit out of steroids. Do blood work and everything's fine. Right. And you're like, no hair wow. loss, no yeah. freaking. I, I, no if I push anything it. over 300, I start getting all the side effects. Hair yeah. starts thinning. I get guy on I get all the all the side effects start happening yeah. as soon as. So my, it, everybody's like that. Some you have these genetic freaks though that can push these limits. So that's what I'm saying is that when we talk about steroids and doses and people like you know the responsible thing to say is to start low because some people on low doses can get severe health problems yep. and side effects from it. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that there aren't people out there who well, they, I think take, a, they take these crazy doses because they only get the positive effects it, of it. It's a, it combina- it's a combination you know. of things, too, because it's not just the anabolics. It's the lifestyle, the diet, oh, you yeah, know, the yeah. you know, re- incredible amounts of protein the, or for long, long periods of time. It's the other recreational drugs that uh, you know, tend to come along with you know, the anabolics and stuff. Do you guys you that, uh, follow that. Ben Pikulski at all? Yeah. He's, like a cool, he's a cool guy. Yeah, he was supposed to come here and do a seminar um, yeah. in the new year. Oh, he's def- a fucking great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Definitely you know, do we, So we, we were talking dude. to him because what we're you, you've seen all these bodybuilders go over to the <clears throat> Middle East. And yeah. all of a sudden, uh, just uh, yeah. yeah. oh, the Dubai trip, it's the, huh? the crazy. And we're bro, like, bro. like, like, doesn't even make sense. Crazy. And we're like, what are they doing? Like, they, are they on like the chicken. inhibitors? The chicken. So are he's been on? there, bro. So we, <laughs> so we got to talk. We got to talk about. We this. asked him about it. Like, this has been something that's been on my mind forever. I'm like, okay, there's. Like, they, what are, are they, they on? on the, yeah, what are they on the next gear? What are they messing with to get these guys? But they have they have this whole setup lifestyle for them. That's what it is. All it is, he said, you live, breathe, eat, shit. That's all you do. All you do is you eat. Pharmaceutical. You live. You take your you take your gear. You go to sleep. And, that's and like the recovery stuff. I mean, they're on the cutting edge of all this. That, that, it's just like, it's he- bodybuilder heaven. Which yeah. is so crazy because like, this is the best part about this podcast right now is that like, everyone on the internet goes like, it's a, it's anabolic chicken. It's a joke about some fancy drug. They that's, have some yeah. new age shit. No. But it's what, what is it really that that's they're the doing? the lifestyle, dude. The yeah. fucking lifestyle. Yeah, it's everything. Oh, the actual dedication, the hard work, the food, the sleep, the recovery, day out. everything. And they're yeah. forcing and you to do it. You you're know, my, saying yes to it. Yeah. My favorite part that like, if we're looking for like the anecdotal proof of it all, you know, is that like, we're I thought it was at, just more trend. No, Everyone's no. just more no, trend. Right? I'll, 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 I'll tell you what Ben, I'll tell you what ben said. And we, we actually brought, I, I don't remember the bodybuilder's name, but it was the one who made the biggest change. Like he Brandon fucked, Curry? Was it yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he, it's and before he, and after. Looked he yeah. literally told us, he's like, no, he's like, he's a perfect example. He's like, I've trained with him before. He's like, when he went over there, he trained on another level he's yeah. never even seen before. And that's and Ben prides himself as being like one of those guys that like just out of all the all the pros. Everybody. Yeah, he oh, out trains yeah. everybody yeah. and stuff like that. So and he's a very intelligent dude. So. He used to be here at uh, Venice for a while before he moved. 
I think over to Florida. So. Yeah, you guys got to have him. You guys will love yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, he's very open talking. about everything like that. And he's where he's at in his life right now and what he's doing is pretty cool. It's very similar to kind of all, all of our journey where we're just trying to find that more of that balance, you know, and optimizing our, our lives. At the same time, too, being able to stay aesthetic and fit and, like, how do we figure that out? And we talk about this on the show a lot that – the ultimate goal, I think, for everybody really is, no matter what your goal is, is to get to a point where you're intuitive eating and you're intuitive training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To a you know point your body. where, where you, you, know, know you know what your body needs to be oh. where you need it to be, and, and you learn to listen to it. Because our body is telling us signals every yeah. fucking day. It's the best coach you'll ever find. It, I, you just got to learn yeah. how to listen to it. I, I tell people that, that I coach all the time. I was like, look, you need, you need if because I've had people tell me like, Look, man, I don't need to know why. I'll just tell me how much to eat. Tell yeah. me how to take. And I was like, no, it, it doesn't work that way because I didn't start making true progress with my physique until I could pay attention to what was happening to myself and then yeah. be smart enough with all the shit I read and people I listen to to be able to make decisions to change it and, and then look it. at myself and then, yeah, you know, is this working? Is that working? So the simple thing of just tell me what to do would be like, I can only, unless I'm with you 24 7, and even then, I'm still not in your You're body. You're not connected to it. Yeah, but like, I, I won't know the best thing for you to do. Like, yeah. I could bullshit you and tell you, well, you know, we're going to lower your calories and this and that. But the second you become, yeah, intuitive and you're paying mm-hmm. attention to yourself. If I could help teach somebody how to do that, yeah. then, we wrote then a, they'll we, figure the rest we out. We wrote a guide for this. Yeah. this, literally, this so the this is literally our, the last book that we just released was to helping people through that process. And I'll tell Hell you yeah. right now, it's a fucking journey. It ain't like yeah. you get to like read the book and all of a sudden you know how to intuitive yeah. eat train. Like I'm no, no, still step, step I'm one. still learning about That's my it. body fucking 17 years later of day in, day out, being yeah. in the gym and I want to say something about yeah. this. Is that This is hands down the most important thing in like fitness. In, mm-hmm. I think in life. I mean, it's, it's a general – it's not a general – it's about fitness, what we're talking about, but it's sure. a very life related to everything idea, mm-hmm. which is like over time, you have to figure out what, what works for you, what doesn't business, what's working for you, what's not, what do you have to change, what do you need? It's like, but people, they always want this, like, oh, just like you said, just tell me what to do, feed me this thing, let me eat it, and it's gonna work for me. Or mm-hmm. let, like, and when I say eat it, I mean like what, the prescription. Sure. But the reality is, like, your body, you guys listening, is 100% different. Like, it, your, everyone responds different to everything. It right? does, and it and it take it another step. It's not just about figuring out what works for your body because there is no formula. It's figuring out really the next step is figuring out how to listen to your body because the the human organism is constantly changing. So what I what may work for my body today, which may be a low carbohydrate, dude. In seven years, diet, we're a completely different whatever. body. You know, five yeah. years later, all of a sudden, I'm eating these foods and I'm like, fuck, my body's not responding anymore. It Why makes, isn't it changing? It makes What's me so happy to know that there are other people in the world that are preaching. Yeah. The same Brother, this is, well, this, is, this, this is what this is what took my so this much. is what took mine. We we have never marketed or advertised this fucking podcast. Right. Never. No. Hundred percent organic. Nobody had any fame. No one was connecting. With but this message is the right message, right. and it needs to be heard. And there's not enough people giving it. Well, this is the truth, though. That's yeah. why. Yeah. yeah. This is the truth. For, it, but you know what? There's not a lot of money in the and truth. It's not sexy. Yeah. yeah. And it's no, not no sexy. Money. It's and not. It's you know why? Trimmer. It takes a long. <laughs> t- it's gonna take a long time. You're probably gonna fail exactly. a bunch of times. That's exactly. You're it, gonna though. have to track a little bit. You're gonna have to learn. You have to pay attention. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's yeah. the same thing that you apply to business to any to anything else in life. It's like you go. You have to deal with it. You have to be willing to go through it to get to wherever you want to go mm-hmm. like you're going to make mistakes everyone is going to make your own personal unique mistakes it's like you have to keep going though yeah. and that's that's the biggest thing so I, to your point then is obviously listening to your body mm-hmm. so go real i i want you to say this thing because I, I think we'll probably just use this podcast just keep no, no no just keep rolling yeah we'll just, we'll, i want we'll you to, to just at least both of you all yeah. three of you say what you think is the best way for someone so they're listening they can get something out of this right now how can they start to listen to their body then? To like to understand that shit because because it's easy to say it. You're right, right. right. So what is what like, so like three things that yeah. they could be like? Yo. So so I'll take you. I'll, I'll explain a few things. First and foremost, there's in anything you learn, uh, there's four stages of learning, and this trust me, this all connects. The first stage is unconscious incompetence. So this is the stage a lot of people are. Most of the average people in the they world they don't know that they don't are, know with nutrition. Or actually, they just don't know that they don't know. It's it's almost like. If I ask you about quantum physics or whatever, and that's not, you don't know what you don't know because you know nothing yeah. completely. The next stage is conscious incompetence. That's the stage people move in when they finally sit down and say, okay, I want to lose weight. I want to get more fit. They start learning things. They go, oh, shit. Proteins. Bro science. Carbs. This is the bro science fat, stage. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, I know how many calories in each, okay? Fuck yeah. The third stage is conscious competence. This is where I have to sit here and figure out what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to do. I have to pay attention to everything that I'm doing. Which is a great place to be, but it's a place that a lot of people get stuck in. Or never but, make it to, because there's, there's work there. There's, there's work still, to be done work. there. There's got, you, yeah. You're going to have to probably weigh and measure your food a little bit. You're going to have to that's probably understand what a protein, that, a carb, a little. That's, that's the step right there. 
to where the people that are passionate and the people that are trying to go extra, that's where they get separated. Because passion will get you to that point. Right. That's but where you get, get to the point where it gets harder. That's where you like, get IIFOM. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. where you get, I count my macros every yeah. day. That's where you get, because I'm consciously competent. Yeah. The next stage, this is where you want to get to. This is the zone, is uh, unconscious competence. It's like breathing. It's like walking. I know what I need to eat right now. I know what my body needs. I know what my workout should be like. I know what my intensity is. I'm not driven by hate for my body. I'm not driven by an insecurity. I'm not, when I go to the gym today, I hate the way I look. So that requires have- a ton of checking in though. It does. Like as you're going through the process, you, while you're going through, you have to check back in with yourself. Like, right. why did I just fucking do that? Or so, why did that bother so there's me? A few, there's a few things that I give people. There's a few exercises well, that, I, be- that I do. Before you go there, I just want to say something because like what you said right now, getting up to this point is, I, I 100% agree with you and I think it's fucking awesome you have a message and, and even on the podcast, you can put it out like that mm-hmm. because whenever I, I quit after my last show last uh, July, I told myself, you know, it's time for a different chapter of my life and I'm going to move on, right? I told myself then that a lot of these things that I was doing that would have been like work, like bodybuilding work, how I eat, stuff like mm-hmm. that, that I was like, well, I'm just, I'm only going to eat if I'm hungry and I'm going to eat what I want. You know, if we go to a restaurant, I'm not going to build my meal anymore. I'm going to just order what's on, what's on the menu, what sounds good. And it took me probably a good six months to break all those habits that I created Absolutely. over that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I would go and I'd start ordering something like healthy or something that I felt like, oh, uh-huh. well, I've had you know quite a few calories today, so maybe I should order something like that. It's because dinner. you had conditioned like, yourself to mm-hmm. not listen to your body. And yeah. this is actually where everybody, most people are. Look, I'll tell you what. If I, if I, uh, if I tell people, the average person, uh, list 10 breakfast foods, they're going to list what? Eggs, milk, bacon, right? 10 dinner foods, 10 lunch foods. Who the fuck? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Who made that shit up? That's yeah. all bullshit. There is no <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is a whole other conversation. And that's, that's me not. That's fuck, me. Man. That's one stage. How about this? 650 Thank episodes, you for the eggs bro. And bacon, 650 though. episodes. Yeah. How about Thank that? you for that. That's, what, that's why everyone goes, how come you guys can't run a country? Because there's so much to be yeah. fucking said about, about this topic. How, yeah. how about this? Yeah. Uh, how about most people, most people in Western developed societies have never felt what true hunger is? This mm-hmm. is a fact. Most people have not gone more than two days without food. Most people haven't gone more than one day without food. This is one of the reasons why fasting is such an effective tool for people. Forget about the health benefits and if you lose weight, forget all about all that stuff. It is an effective tool for a lot of people to f- learn what hunger really is, especially yeah. dudes like us who are always focused on trying to build all Experience kinds of muscle. Yeah. We never feel hunger. <laughs> yeah. We're eight times a day. Yeah. Yeah. How many guys have like smashed you know, a fucking burger just to get to that extra 50 or 100 grams of protein because you're under and you're afraid a pound of muscle is going to fall off you overnight? Yeah. Like The body doesn't metabolize muscle that way. It's, it's the last place. It's expensive tissue. You don't even yeah. want to go there. It's crazy because like most of my career, I guess you'd say, is I've always done intermittent fasting without even trying. Like I don't eat that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People probably be like, man, you eat seven... Like, I went... I went um, just just last night, I went to uh, this like this medical place to get some shit checked out. And the guy goes, he goes, "Oh man, you must you must eat a ton of food. You must eat a ton of food all the time." Like, cause like I had to take my shirt off. They put all these like probes and shit yeah. on me. And then he's like uh, asking me like everybody, and that's that's the normal response from everybody, yeah. which is like you must eat yeah. all this shit. Like if I've never. I never eat it I, unless I force myself. And back mm-hmm. in the day, I used to not be able to even eat food. And they would joke about and take pictures of like my uneaten meals and all this shit. <laughs> I just never had a real big appetite. Right. So, so that's those are these are just examples of how we have been conditioned to like when we're kids. Finish your plate, you know. Finish all the food, yeah. you know. Force feed it. So we just don't know how to listen to these signals. So one of the first things you can do to get yourself there is start tracking. You need to start tracking right. just so you can become conscious of what's going on. Pay attention to. Becoming aware around your meals. And what I mean by that is no distractions. Sit down. Eat your food. Don't mm-hmm. drink water while you eat your food because when you drink water, you yeah. don't need to chew as much. Be present. Put yeah. the food away. So you got to chew the fuck out of it. and You got to taste it. Swallow it. Take notes. And this sounds like a pain in the ass. It's just one of the steps. Write how you feel afterwards. Write how you feel you know, before. All that stuff. And what people start to, to find when they start to do this is they start to make connections to certain things. So I'll give you an example. I have an online client who... You know, she tells me, oh, for the last four years, I feel bloated around 10 p.m. I can't figure out, or 10 a.m. I can't figure out what's going on. I just get this bloat. And so I'm looking at her food, and I'm already thinking it's probably the bagel you have in the morning. Yeah. So I ask her, I say, well, what about your breakfast? You have a bagel in the morning. No, I've been eating that for years. Like, that's, that's definitely not it. <laughs> I've been having that for 10 years. <laughs> oh, shit. That's not what's causing it. So I said, that's not a problem because it's not my job to make that connection for her. It's her job, right? So I'm having her keep track and have her keep track. And over time, she starts to say, you know what? 
I'm noticing that it's literally an hour after I eat my bagel. I wonder if it's the bagel. Now, here's the cool thing about it. She's made that connection. She keeps eating the bagel. Why? Because people are connected to their food. Like, you tell someone to take something out of their diet. Bagels are really good. (laughs) I love bagels. I just want to make that point. But she started connecting bloat, the uncomfortable feeling, with the bagel. And what do you think starts to happen? She stopped craving that bagel. She doesn't want to eat anymore. Not because she doesn't. She thinks she can't, but because she's connecting it to. Feeling so you're going at this as some like like some conscious like yeah. But this is. Like, it's, but what you got to not- understand what he said. I always have to stop him on the show when we go this. Point it takes because a long time. Yet to me, I don't even like us talking to the like. We're talking black belt shit, bro. You're talking about like we're still working on that well, shit right hold, now. You know what I'm saying? Well, like yeah. keep, like that's still working on. Yeah, it. we're all still working now, on. Now keep that this shit. in mind. I did. But there's this, steps this to is this not, shit. This is not breakthrough. The the, the food industry has been doing this for decades. For yeah. decades, the food industry has been doing this to you. When you go to the movie, actually, let me ask you this. Where do you crave popcorn the most? At the movies. Why? Because they've already made that connection for you. The food industry has been doing this for decades. You can do this to yourself. So that same, that same client that I had, that same female client, she's also tracking, and I'm telling her she should probably try eating more vegetables. Hates vegetables. She starts eating more. She starts to notice, I feel good when I eat vegetables. And then she My wants skin to eat looks, the vegetables. Next thing you know, she yeah. starts to crave those vegetables. So that's just an example. Tracking, paying attention to your food, playing with your macros. It's more just a conscious here. effort of what you're that's doing. It. Yeah, but then you're over, doing. And then over time, as you start to, you start to implement what, are, what I call intuitive days, where now I want you to go on these days, well, and I want you to eat whatever you feel. And at first, it looks like a cheat day, because people are like, oh, I'm not <laughs> tracking, I can eat whatever. Hey, but slowly over time, exactly. it turns into... I'm eating the right things, but here's the other the other kicker. I think this. there's bigger levels that you can hit <clears throat> that you can address first before you even get there. I think people like when they uh, when they fuck, what was I just gonna tell you? There's a yeah. stoner moment right there. <laughs> it's all good. It's okay. <laughs> totally interrupt. It's okay. We'll help stoner you. moment. Well, right. We got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know where you're at. You're like popcorn pizza. Yeah. It's <laughs> oh man, I'm hungry. Pizza. I know you guys. <laughs> Cheat <laughs> day. Oh but, shit. But here's, a, here's no, no, the, no. I know. Where, I know okay. where I was going. So right. it's nice. what what people what's 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 you tough. Interrupt me again. Yeah. Is the don't do that. Start saying me. something. Don't do it. Start no, saying back something. To me. And he'll get back. No, to it. it's Don't it's the what they can do first is first. Actually, I would I would teach if the I got a younger generation that's listening <laughs> to us right now is to to back off uh, the crazy beast mode training all the time. Because to me, I think there's your body sending you signals. That's not too. listening to your body. At yeah, all, right? yeah, and so you can't. You don't even have an opportunity to listen to or pay attention to what your food is trying to respond to your body because your body and your CNS is so fried from seven days a week, no days off, beast mode all the time that you're missing signals from that well, also. Well, it's just so funny because like I'm, everybody's I'm had that moment where they have like that, diarrhea right. or something or your stomach hurts and they're like, there's no connection Bro, there to what, what you ate or... Well, when, I, 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 when I was a kid, like I, wanted losing to put sleep. A, I wanted to put on muscle and I bought heavyweight gainer 900. Do you guys remember that fucking shit? <laughs> no. Heavyweight oh, you? I'm 38. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I bought heavyweight gain. I'm 28, so I'm pretty, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was just like gym chalk with some flavor. So <laughs> I would buy, and bro, I would get diarrhea every fucking time. <laughs> yeah. But I'd take it because I'm like, this is going to make me big. If, if diarrhea makes you lose weight. Gotta so obviously, big, I'm getting, no yeah. pain, no gain. Yeah. So, my, but what I was going to say is when you start to listen to your body, it's not that you're going to eat the perfect things all the time or do the right things. It's the right things for whatever you need. And what I mean by that is we're, we're hanging around, right? We're making connections, all buddies hanging out. This may be a good time to have a glass of wine, have a burger, because we're what's feeding us isn't necessarily the the food to our physical body, but maybe we're feeding friendship, connection. Maybe we're feeding creativity. Maybe I'm going to smoke a joint. Might not be the best thing for my body, but maybe that's going to help me with my creativity. So as you're starting to listen to these signals, you do get to a point where things become more intuitive. Now, can you be a bodybuilder? Totally listen to your body? Of course not, because it's extreme. However, when you know your body, you know how to manipulate these things, and then you can really maximize your performance. Now, if you want to be extreme, you can be extreme, but also understand your body and be the best. This is how I okay, so you guys wrote a book on this. Intu- yeah, the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. I'm going to get your book. Yeah. All right. It's just this a guide. Awesome. It's a we guide. got you, bro. Still, I got good. you half yeah. off. Yeah. No. <laughs> Use my coupon code. Yeah. coupon code. Yeah. Use my we'll, coupon code. We'll send you guys access to everything so you guys can dig You'll through all the your shit. You'll slide in your DM. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, this, this is the process. And because you, you guys I always got to stop them, though, because it, 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 sometimes when we get, get this it's deep, a process, it, get, it gets yeah. woo-woo for a lot of people because it's like most people are nowhere even fucking close to that. They're yeah, still yeah. doing Start so with many tracking. things. So that's why yeah. I asked the question earlier. What like that's, first thing and that's, is like where do you start? Start by you have to track at one point. Start you with have to be, at least become aware exactly. of what. And then I'm and this I'm a big I I, uh, I know there's this huge debate about wearables and shit, right? Like how accurate they're. It doesn't fucking matter. What they're great about is they give you great feedback on your movement because the average person has no fucking clue of their patterns. And I'll tell you right now, I don't know how many times every time I put the damn thing on, I get surprised. 
that, oh, shit, I thought I was moving a lot more than I was. And most people are making the worst decisions on the days they most certainly shouldn't do it and the days that they probably could have enjoyed that glass of wine or done some things they could have just – Shifted that around their yeah, life. Talking about just yeah. activity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, movement. just movement. understanding that, like that, track that yeah. stuff and pay attention to it. Well, it, it I, I want to make it a point too to say that, like, because there's some people that are probably listening, going like, "Oh, well, I don't care what like beginners should do." Right? Is it tracking data? is not something just for, for beginners. Every time I would hit like a plateau or I'd fail and I'd start to lose my shit because I'm like, why the fuck can I yeah, get past this? Super important. The first thing I do is go back and just start recording every possible thing so I can So you can see of. what's going mm-hmm. on. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because you get to the point where you're like, you're making progress, Absolutely. you get lazy, you don't and, track everything. And this is true yeah. for... Yeah. This they is made true it for fucking so easy yeah. now. I mean, you yeah. pr- you don't even finish typing the food. It oh, pop- man, populates in these apps back, now. Know, back yeah. when I was... We used to write like this all along. Looking up a book. I prefer... I preferred the notepad. Like, that worked for me. I mean, I did... I did. Well, that's because you love this shit yeah exactly you know what I'm saying you love the process but I you know however you're going to track whether it's an (coughs) app or whether it's going to literally hand like whatever works for you however you want to track tracking data is important and you know when and with training you know it's funny I did a a post the other day that got a lot of controversy I I titled it cardio sucks for fat loss and of course everybody got pissed off but it's the same thing with, with training like Pay attention to the signals that you're sending your body, and the reason why I wrote, I wrote that 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 topic was cardio burns calories, but it also sends the signal for your body to become efficient clickbait, with bro. calories. Oh, have some it, good clickbait, it, yeah. and it worked. But yeah, exactly. it's, but it's true. What signal? I have are, nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I'm just saying, but what great. signal are you sending your body when you're doing a lot of cardio? Become efficient with calories, yeah. aka slow down your metabolism. And then look, you've been in gyms a long, you know, long time. What's a cardio bunny look like? Is they come uh, in to do an hour, two hour cardio every shit day. Every day and they never change. They're flabby, skinny yeah. fat, right? Mm-hmm. They've taught their body to become very efficient with calories because, and the, again, with training, people are not paying attention to the signals that they're sending the body. They just think hard work equals results. It doesn't. The right work equals results. No. And it's about this, the signal that you send your body. This so, is more about being woke than it is about like bodybuilding. Fuck, it's fuck about yeah. awareness. Come on, bro. Well, that's so we <laughs> – so that and, woke. So Welcome our, to the podcast. Our, our, our first yeah. program that we wrote – Hit Swole is old school. Our first program yeah. that we wrote was uh, Maps and a Balk. And it was one that Sal created before we all got together. And it's their, our foundational program. And really the magic behind it besides the trigger sessions, which we'll get to that in a second, the it's just full body workouts – for the average gym goer, because we figure ninety percent of the people that are coming in here aren't like us. You know, we're we're the one percent, right? And everybody else are the well, we do, we're on, we're off, we're on, we're off. So, teaching them even the right movements that they should be focusing on when they're just getting started. I mean, it, that was why the program took off so well. It's basically just a full body routine. I want to make a point real quick to because every all the normal normal people, right? I you know <laughs> we're not on and off. Like I've been on and off lately. Like I've been this like I haven't been myself. So I just want to say that like if you're one of those people. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's right. okay. Just get back on it. Right. Because I just want to make that point. Because when you said it, it sounded just a little like. So let's touch on 1%. that for a second. Let's touch that for a second yeah. because this is something that uh, I think is important. Because I think that there, I don't think you're on or you're off. I think that it's it's okay for you to feed other parts of your life. It's not always about yeah. the way you look. Right, so yeah. it's not on. So or off. so you may be you may be off on your fitness right now, bro. But what you do you might want? be you might be working the podcast right now, and that yeah. might be taking you to a whole no part of your life that's actually you more may, important. You may be growing differently. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? You don't and this always... is the first time in my life that I've ever really started to experience that. Like, this, the, the growing pain of, like, the gym. What the fuck? Like, I've been missing. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it, it's like a double-edged sword for me because, like, it has helped me do other things, but at the same time, I noticed that, like, uh, the gym has always been the thing that was, like, kept me kind of, like, mm-hmm. focused, center, kept me, like, you know, release energy that may be excess or anger or whatever or, and um, I, so I noticed that moving forward, though, as I start to accomplish other things that I have, I seem to have like my old, like I would get, I used to get more anxiety before I really, really got into training. Mm. So now it's like, now that I'm in, now it's like, like it comes back almost mm. like the anxiety comes back because I'm not as consistent with the training. It, it, it could be part of it. It could be look at a lot of different things. The body constantly Food. changes. Uh, gut health is a big one yeah. when it comes to that. That's a massive one. I mean, we've had the opportunity to talk with some of the most brilliant doctors and scientists in this field. And if you look right now, we all know about the obesity epidemic, the health epidemic. There's also a, what, what they're cons- calling a mental health epidemic that's going on right now. Anxiety, by, by the way, has become now the number one most diagnosed uh, ailment uh, that uh, people yeah. are having. And its growth, its growth has been exponential, yeah. right alongside the obesity epidemic because they're closely connected. But it's not the obesity there's other stuff that's going on. Autoimmune diseases are on the rise, mm-hmm. uh, like like crazy. I mean, when I was a kid, I don't know any kids with peanut allergies or any kind of food allergy. Now in my yeah. kid's school, there's entire classrooms that are allergen free. 
I mean, it's, it's incredible. Something else is going on. A lot of these doctors and scientists that we're talking to are saying it has to do with the breakdown of the gut. It has to do with what's called hyperpermeability of the gut to cause, to allow things. Because your gut, your gut really is, it's a tube running from your mouth to your, to your ass. Yeah. That's not inside your body. It's a tube that goes through. So whatever goes in there is not in your body until it gets absorbed. And when you break down that wall, which is happening with everything from, you know, uh, you know some of the, uh, the glyphosates that are found on, on GMO type foods. So glyphosates are herbicides. Uh, artificial sweeteners can do this with the gut microbiome. But, you know, it's funny when you bring up like, uh, like herbicides, pesticides, and the stuff like that that are on food. When you look at what they're designed to do to some of the bugs, some of them are literally to make them like their guts explode. Yeah, right. I guess. Exactly. Right. And then wonder why it might it's be like, affecting why, yeah. why, why are people yeah. having a similar well, response? Right. Well, so, so what happens is, is your, your, oh, your gut lining starts to break down. Now the food that you've always eaten goes through when it's not supposed to. Your body recognizes it as a foreign invader, develops antibodies to it. All of a sudden, you got food intolerances. Yeah. All of a sudden, fuck, I used to eat bread all the time. Now I can't eat bread no more. Or I used to have milk all the time. I can't have milk no more. Or eggs fuck me up now. The, and some of the other side effects include things like depression, anxiety, which are the first and most common symptoms of some of that breakdown. So uh, some of the, one of the best ways to, to heal some of that is to start to heal your gut. And I can send you guys some, 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 of the, some people that we work with. Dr. Ruscio is an expert, by the way. I was diagnosed with uh, ulcerative colitis back in like 2009, 2010. And it's something that I had to, to battle. Um, mm. And I've learned how your asshole is still connected to the rest of your body. Yeah. And if you don't take care of it, like it's – the rest of yourself is going to suffer. I mean, I've, I noticed that, um, well, here's something like any methylated or highly estrogenic steroid triggered a colitis flare for me. Mm. And I think it's due to estrogen clearance through the gut as well as increased estrogen, you know, from those drugs. Uh, for some reason, the increased estrogen in the gut triggers like, you know, a flare in some way. And so I, I don't want to get too deep onto that science mm. of it because uh, I'm not an expert. I just was nerd reading it. Whoa. Oh, hey. We're back. Oh, we're back. And, um, <laughs> Crazy, you know. So I Powerful drew a correlation podcast, that like huh? hormones, <laughs> hormones are going to affect you know your gut health. Like they, they it's absolutely, still connected. They absolutely you know? do, but it's so also weird as fuck. Yeah, Sorry, we're going to show like what the yeah. fuck no is going yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> so the the bodybuilding lifestyle is actually uh, terrible for gut health. Yeah, for a few oh, different man. reasons. One is one of the things that we're taught as bodybuilders is to consume a lot of food, especially yeah. post workout, and especially the harder the workout is. Well, one of the things that a very intense exercise does is it ramps up inflammation and it wraps up inflammation in the gut. This is why if you push yourself really, really hard, you want to throw up, right? But then we force feed ourselves afterwards. Bad combination. Also, the comp consumption of supplements is the highest among people who want to build muscle. Supplements contain large amounts of artificial sweeteners and other things that just over time destroy the microbiome. So you combine those two things. It's just overly processed Frequent food. eating, frequent feedings, inflammatory. This is why fasting seems to heal the gut because mm -hmm. it gives it a break, but you're constantly feeding it. So you combine all these things. You do it over the course of you know, 5, 10, 15 years. And I'll tell you what, you cannot find me one person who has not been lifting or bodybuilding for over 15 years that doesn't have gut problems. Yeah. Almost every single one of them has something wrong. Unless, gut, unless they're result. actively doing stuff about right. their gut. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So right. when you talk to people like Dr. McCullough and stuff, these guys believe that the next big where we're, we're going to hear is protein. And he actually said to us on the show that he, he believes that protein can be as or more dangerous. Than, than excess ca carbohydrate. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They're finding just the way that it, it uh, signals uh, cancer cells to grow um, and that it's pro-aging. But one of the remedies to that, and this is good, this is good we're talking about this because we have a lot of private guys but, who lift and want to build, right? One of the remedies to that is to occasionally go low protein, occasionally throw in a low protein day. Now, the flip side of that is you'll probably end up building more muscle because some studies are showing now that by doing that, you increase protein sensitivity. Just like anything else, the body can become desensitized and stops responding. So you go like you have like a vegan day every once in a while. Then when you go back to your high protein. This is why CrossFit was so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just do a bunch of random shit. Yeah. <laughs> the next day you do a bunch of Muscle dip. confusion. Uh, what shit. am I doing? <laughs> Have you ever noticed social. when you. Sorry, that was great. <laughs> Such an open. That was perfect. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that when you look into, you know, uh, nutrition and like what's good or bad for you whenever like you're on that level? Sorry. <laughs> what's, I'm you're still sorry. cracking yourself yeah, up? Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, oh, man. Is that you find out that you're like, food is bad for you. Yeah. Like calories are bad for you. Like everything is causing wear and tear to some, some degree. And so I think like what uh, Jack Lane said a long time ago is like eat fewer calories. And he was kind of, he didn't call it intermittent fasting, but he was on a fasting thing. And he was, he didn't even have that much science to back his opinions, but he felt like the 
bigger you were and the more food you consumed, the faster you would die. Mm-hmm. Right? The faster you would age. Uh, this so is true kinda... for uh, you know car- carbohydrates and proteins in particular. They do cause this kind of aging effect. The human body evolved with periods of fasting. For most of human civilization, or you know, on Earth, uh, we food was scarce. So the human body actually thrives with periods of no food. Now, this is not ideal necessarily for muscle building or whatever. It is ideal for longevity. However, if you're smart and you want to build lots of muscle and you know how to inject it into your routine, like the occasional fast. By the way, you know when fasting is amazing? When you're bulking. No shit. Yeah. Like you're bulking, eating a shit ton of calories, throwing a day where you have like one meal or no meal. Tell you, I've literally done this my entire Bro, life. Bro, unconscious. Like, I used to, I used to do it, too, it on you know? purpose hey, to my like competitors dead, just to God. teach them some shit mm-hmm. and fuck with them. Like, yeah. yes, you can fast. Yes, we're going to be whole, there. My whole, whole career. trip, right? Yeah, my a, whole career, I've done this just because that's how my fucking. And it worked. I mean, shit. I used to. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not that obvious, Brad. What's that? I mean, what's not obvious? Because he's like, did it work? And you're like, Fuck yeah, dude! Yeah. Whoa, well, no, I mean, where I'm at, right? Like, I'm a, I'm a brick shit house. house. Yeah, no, hold on, chill the fuck out. It's, I'm not, it's, Do I have to pose down right now? No, but it's like I, I mean, I'm just based on everything, right? Like this, people would say, like I said earlier, people think automatically you must eat a thousand meals, you eat right. all this food, and I never have. Right. I've mm-hmm. never been that way. Yeah. So that's I'm not saying like uh, fucking amazing, but like. People look at me and they fucking, they're like, this fucking video, this guy's doing this. I'll tell you, I'll tell shit you what they want to do. I'll tell you what, man. If you optimize. Oh, I was fucking with you, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I you want to hit a nerve. <laughs> if you <laughs> optimize like, oh. the human body, it can do some pretty fucking amazing things. Once you learn how to optimize it, and then you can push it in different directions and you're not fighting it. Because if you're fighting the bo- human body and you're constantly, you know, people think like, I have to force muscle to grow. I have to force. You ain't forcing shit. Your body wants to, it's adapting. Yeah. If you are fighting your body, at some point you're gonna lose. It's gonna push you will back. Ne- yeah. You will never, you will never win long term. I would definitely like, say, yeah, with within this last uh, getting ready for this last meet, I probably ate the least and you know trained. I mean, it, it, part of it was my coach, you know, picking things like RPE and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, picking a scale of what I'm ready for that day based off of like how I feel. You know what I mean? Um, but I've I made some of the best progress, recovered the best, and ate the and it was literally like you know. Just like oh, if I feel like eating this this morning, I'm gonna eat this. It would it would I would have it. You know things that I knew right. I was gonna digest. Things like for, like for me, I, I digest beef pretty easy. I, mm-hmm. I grew up in a Mexican household eating like you know hooves and stuff like that. With, you know <laughs> you wow. menudo, hooves, bro? you know menudo oh. and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's hooves in there. You Not know what I mean? Me. Not so me. so just like yeah. I, my, I mean, I can digest certain things. I think easier than like certain people. But you know, it's like I eat beef. You know, I'd eat like a bagel and a protein shake for breakfast or eggs if I felt mm-hmm. like it. But just, it was three big meals. And then randomly, you know, I, I always wake up randomly in the middle of the night, like four or five in the morning. And then I was like, I'll have like some Greek yogurt. Mm-hmm. It, it, I'll run to the fridge, eat like one or two things and then go back to bed. And it, I would go right back to bed. You know what I mean? And I had an awesome meat and recovered well. And, you know, but I wasn't before it was like, oh, I got to eat this many times a day and da, 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 da. And, you know, to the gills with protein and it well, was, well, you gotta think to yourself this is who there's there, obviously there's a message that's out there that's the the bro science or the the common knowledge that you need a shit ton of protein and yeah. you need you need to eat a lot of meals all day every day. Yeah, who benefits from that message? Yeah, the companies, of course. Yeah, because course. the only way to hit those numbers and eat eight meals a day and, and eat two or three. You gotta have a shake and two bars, yeah. dude. Yeah. But you're just always eating. eating. Yeah, what's it's the name? Doctor Integrity. Like panic. Uh, you know, uh, Doctor Integrity. Yeah, promoting two grams, three grams of protein per pound of body weight. That's a young. That means a 130 pound female eating 260 <laughs> grams of protein yeah. a day. You're not gonna shit. No. The best no. is when people are like, "I haven't eaten in like uh, two hours. I'm I'm getting smaller." Like yeah. what? Like, like, I feel nah. fine. No. <laughs> that's that's I, so common, man. I had a bunch of interesting stuff happen when I had to deal with the colitis and bodybuilding. Like I say, it's the best and worst thing that happened to me because worse than that, it did severely limit a lot of stuff I could do. It took away a lot of tools, right? And in I order to get more jack. Blood, you would shit blood, right? Well, yeah, that, I'm saying, <laughs> because of that. That's, right? like that's never healthy. So like I had to focus on healing myself and, and trying to fix and live with the colitis that I had to completely look at, I had to be more intuitive with my nutrition. I, I wanna, um, And I, I learned so much more about bodybuilding trying to, to fix that. I, I want to know how you dealt with uh the change of your physique like that that t- had to take some serious mental self-awareness you know to- it, it didn't it didn't bother me 
that bad for two reasons. One, I was shitting blood and feeling like shit. So you just I kind of, I was like, I don't give a fuck how I look. I just don't want to shit blood anymore. Oh, wow. You know, it was, that, um, it was that bad for you that you're not even thinking about your body image at all. You're just, yeah, I was just better. like, I don't no, want man. When you, you, when you, when your body's speaking to you, if you ignore it long enough, it'll, it'll start, start yelling screaming at you. At yeah. you. Yeah. Well, and so, uh, and then the, the second reason was that I, I have a weird relationship, I guess, with that. Like, uh, you know, I, I was a skinny guy, but I never wanted to get jacked because I felt like I wanted to show everybody that I like, I got, I started training because uh, being just an angry teenager, your parents divorced, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I was connected to the emotional aspect there. But after that, when I got into bodybuilding, when I wanted to, like, when I started training using weights for more than just sport, right? Um, it was a science experiment and, and like, a work ethic thing. Mm -hmm. I was infatuated with steroids and nutrition and supplements. And, and I, was, I wanted to try things and experiment them and look at what happened. So I never, like, I never really even wanted to, show off anything like to regular society i only wanted to talk to other like bodybuilding nerds mm. and like you know talk to them about the physique so, so it wasn't I, that big when i got like even small man. now like i don't care like it, it mm. never you know, I, I guess i never related that to could a, you find anyone thing, to talk you know? to i'm really curious there's not a lot there's not a lot of bodybuilding nerds no uh <laughs> there's not a lot out there i mean i found a couple here yeah these these were guys that were like that you know yeah. that um one of, the, like, one of the worst things that can have that that happens to people in fitness is that they identify so strongly with their body that any change that happens to it um, is is devastating. And they live yeah, yeah. and it becomes this obsession, you know. And at the end of the day, you all get old. You know yeah. what I mean? You, yeah. We're gonna get old anyway. Like, don't identify. You are not your body. You know, people say I'm fat. You know, you're not fat. Your body has fat on it, but you are not fat. You're the whatever's inside that body. Yeah. And so once you learn that, it becomes a lot easier to train and eat right and whatever. It's not this crazy obsession. Not this crazy like, uh, you know, taking over my life or. I have to feel, I have to do it, otherwise I don't feel good about myself or whatever. And then you do it because you love it. It's a totally different experience, completely different. Because I was, I was there too, man, with my training yeah. as a young kid. So, Also, I, I was kind of happy that I had the colitis happen because I don't think I was ever that in tune with myself until I was forced to. Um, like I, I, would, I would log my calories, log you know, my food and stuff, but I, I never went to the next level until that happened because I had to use things like fasting. Um, I was even using exogenous growth hormone to try and heal the ulcers mm -hmm. that I had while going through fast, while learning about not only probiotics in general, but every single strain of probiotics and what it does and what we think it can do. Um, different herbal anti-inflammatory supplements, different food pairings to help the food digest better and get to a point where I'm like, okay, well, I don't think I could blast food like I used to. So I need to make sure that I can digest and absorb every single nutrient, every single calorie and like perfect that. So like if I can't eat 5,000 calories a day, I can only eat 3,000 because of my gut. I need to make that 3,000 go to work. Right. And then when I would be healthy and I, I had battled, you know, I'd have flares come and strip 20 or 30 pounds of muscle off me. I have to fight for it back up that when I was 100 percent healthy, like the year 2014, when I won those shows, I was healthy almost the whole year. And I used all those tools as well as the that irony is it made like you a better bodybuilder. It did. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the best and worst thing that happened yeah. to me. That I, That's well, that I at the much. end of the day, when you encounter challenges uh, in life and, you know, you had yours and Brad, you were talking about yours and. When you encounter challenges, and I just I went through a divorce. I was married for 15 years, very difficult time, you know, having to you know split custody with the kids and all that stuff. At the end of the day, you have to remind yourself that growth only happens from being uncomfortable. It never happens yeah, when when you're in a, when you're in a comfortable space. There's no reason for you to change and grow. It only happens when you're met with extreme challenge. And if you look back at those challenging moments, as hard as they are, they are to look at, you can also think of how much you changed and grew from those moments and how they made you who you are today. And if you keep that growth mentality about you, uh, you'll always, you're always going to grow and succeed. I agree. And I, I had a conversation uh, the other day with a, a friend of mine who she, she had uh, experienced loss. And I, I was talking to her about like my loss and her, her initial thing was like, if I could basically change everything, like if I could be in the place where that thing was, right, where that person was, like imagine you experienced loss and you're like, if I can go where they are and not be here, I would be here. Right. And, and I heard that and I was like, man, it's, it's sad because I remember moments in my life when I used to not necessarily think like that, but be like um, with my father, for example, yeah. um, very, very like this whole why, why and feeling like just everything, everything was shit. Nothing, nothing felt good. Nothing. It was like I was constantly focused on like the negative part of something like the uncomfortableness. Mm -hmm. And then like flash forward, like it became a driving force for me. And then flash forward, like now, so I'd say 18, it became a very strong driving force for me. I was like, okay, let me use this to better my life. And then now, now 10 more years, 28, I see it as being like, it's what fills me up is like the fact that I dealt with something 
the trying time, the challenge. I got through it. And it's what's made me who I am. Did people ever, because most people, I would say if they've gotten like, uh, if they like my stuff beyond the, I guess I, I guess I want to say like most people who, who have bought into my brand are the people who are maybe not because, oh, he did really cool shit, but because like I affected them somehow with like an Instagram sure. video that was about life, right? So meaning I got full circle from like this moment and I was trying to, I was trying to explain to her that like from the shitty trying time, the challenge, I got to this moment where, okay, for a long time, I would say eight, eight, nine, eight, shit, yeah, eight years, I didn't know what I was, it was just shitty. Life almost like felt like it started after that. Mm -hmm. And then for a long time, it became a, 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 like a movement thing that something that pushed me forward. And now it's like, oh shit, that's the thing that's fulfilling me. Was, and it was because of that challenge, because of that thing that I went through or got through. So I was trying to explain to her that it was like, it's always hard in the beginning to figure out like why, some, why you, you had to deal with it. And so just not to get super, super deep, because I always tend to do that, <laughs> to get back to the idea of like fitness is like exactly what Yeah, but I want to ask you something on that topic, yeah. where you're at. I want to ask you personally, like where, where are you having the most personal growth in your own life? Now? Right now, yeah. Like at this current moment, like in your life, what are you working through? What are the challenges? Where are you growing? I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to be, how to just do more normal, normal shit. What do you mean by that? Like I get so caught up and I've been so caught up for the years in this whole like Instagram and creating content and like doing this stuff. And, and yeah, it, it just, it got to a point, like I want to say a few months ago, probably about, Actually, it was in January. It was in January when everyone on the internet decided that they wanted to try and talk shit about me and make up lies, mm. okay? And I got to a point where I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? I know what my heart feels and I know how much good I want for people. Fuck. <laughs> shit. Yo, help me out. <laughs> fuck. Right. I, I remember during this time because I would, I would tell him, you know, like during January and stuff, I would see like, these things and then I would I would watch his following or whatever come down you know and then I would I but I would just reach out and I'd be like y you're good like this is th there's nothing like we know the people know you know that are close to you and that's really all that matters you know what I mean and um, you know and he, he was like no you know it'll be it'll be like I'm sick of you know I'm do you ever think what a monster you've kind of created right for yourself? It's like you've built this, you've yeah, built this beautiful it just, thing. It got me, it just got me like, man, like I really felt like I only had good intentions and I got, and people were just like, fuck you on some shit that wasn't true. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And I had to deal with that. And, and so that, that started me on this path this past year of like, man, like I've always known why I'm doing this, but like, let me, let me look at this even further and what really matters. That's why you mentioned like my starting to change what I'm doing because I'm just like, fuck it. Because like I realized Starting the podcast was is, is perfect for that. You yeah, can't you can't make everybody happy. And I for a long time I like that's what I tried to do. So in my family situation, like my mom, we had step family. We had and I noticed her her relationship with them when 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 they, she's great now, but when they were younger, it was very like a negative thing. It was like a negative thing. Like you're this kid, you're like this, and I was always the kid of like, yo, you gotta like those kids are gonna hate you when they grow up because you're mean to them. And I was like a fucking six, seven, eight year old kid saying this shit to my mom, right? And and then like. I've always had moments of like, man, just, just be right. So going full, like full, I don't know how to like full circle to be like everyone saying that I was wrong, but knowing, like knowing what it was it, it, and you couldn't tell people, you couldn't show people. It didn't matter. Cause it was just like on the internet, it's gotta be true. I, I got very just like, fuck this, but it, it got me in a moment where I was like, what really matters now then? Right. Mm -hmm. And what really matters like for me to do and what I want to do. And I just realized like I have to, and I think everyone has to do a, a better job of this is like, instead of like looking out and like, trying to like I don't know I was trying to make everything right for everyone mm -hmm. and I realized like I couldn't if, I, if I'm not right I can't make things right for people so I, mm -hmm. I got very like demotivated internally so that it was like externally I wasn't able to be the person that everyone felt like I was and I was just like fuck like, like people would tell me that they'd be like hey, you're, not, you know, you're not yourself you're like, you're like I got more negative or this or that and that's not who I am because I was going through it but like now I'm starting to realize like fuck it like you can't make everybody happy. Right. You can't please everybody. You can't get everyone on your same page. Like, but you can do like what makes you happy. And if people can get along and be along and come along for that ride and want to, mm -hmm. then let them. Mm -hmm. And I used to try and like, like I said, I'd want to make everybody like me, but I realized it's not possible. Like just in life. Right. No, it's and that's what true integrity is. That's what real integrity is. Real integrity is I'm just gonna be me, and and that's it. And if you like me, great. If you don't, then that's okay too. Yeah. yeah. You have that. You have that choice. I mean. When we first started the show, we had... It was nerve-wracking. I remember getting our first haters who would say things about us. And at first, it hurts because you know 
what you know you know what your intentions are you know what you're trying to do and you you want to tell these people like what the fuck's wrong with you man i'm just trying to help i'm just trying to do what's right but then you start to think to yourself like does it matter like i'm just going to be i'm going to be who i am because because when it when i got popular i didn't care about anything else but just being who i am right you know what I'm saying? Like because because it was a whole, there's a whole there's a whole popular there's a whole transition of like no one knew who the fuck I was and I was just doing shit that I loved and shit that made me happy mm-hmm. being who I was mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden people are like that guy's cool and this internet thing and like yeah you could post these pictures and you know people are gonna think it's cool and you're doing it but like it was just that's who I was and then eventually it was like man that guy's popular now or that guy's famous or whatever they say on social media like social yeah. media Instagram famous Insta famous yeah and it's like I, and I look back when I started it it wasn't like it wasn't like uh, I wasn't trying to make people happy. I was just trying to be like, I'm doing the shit that I have always done and I think is cool. Like, even how we got into all this to gym stuff in general. And then, and then it like, you get to this point where like, you find yourself, you see a comedy, you're like, fuck, why is it like, what? Like, you know, I, I just got to a point where I'm like, fuck, man. I got to get back so to where you, I was when, when I started. When you become a real ninja in this, right, is, and, and, I, and I talk about this on the show on teaching people how to become like more self-aware is, when shit, when I have those are triggers, right? We just had, we just got done interviewing Lewis House. Lewis House just dropped a book uh, called a what, "Mask of uh, the Masks of Masculinity." Mm-hmm. Fucking definitely Check read that just from the topic we're talking about right yeah. now. But fuck, why was I going that direction? Uh, I, want, I want to share with him the the haters. I don't know. No, 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 no. With, <laughs> with the wearing the mask and like being able to you see that the, when when you have these moments, ninja. yeah, when you have these moments that where you feel like anger or hurt or pissed off and in South Sharon, when I remember when it happened to me, when we were first starting, I, the real ninja part is being able to stop right there and fuck the other person is why do I allow that to make me feel a certain yeah. way? Yeah, what why is it hurting? It's driven from it. an insecurity always. Yeah. Always. If you can dig, unpack it enough and figure it out, it, it's always rooted somewhere. Then it's you become us. invincible. But it's crazy because I didn't. I started out not like that. Yeah. Like yeah. I, it, that developed because of the whole. You Instagram probably started thing. to identify yeah. with it, right? You yeah. Who you know? It's like this. Yeah. Thing so that, then, if, if anyone like tried to like take it down, it was like, whoa, what the Personal. fuck? Give or take. It, yeah. It was. It, so it was because but to when the point I started, where he blocks people, you don't even fucking. No, know no, you that was like <laughs> no, no, no. That was way before. That was way before. <laughs> <laughs> that was when I was just like, fuck, that was trying to dick ride me. That was before any of this shit that yeah. was like it wasn't there yeah. and then so it's like it's just interesting because then i look back i'm like well the person i was that got me there to that point was the person who was like fuck it i'm just mm-hmm. gonna be me right so he talks about that when you're your mask uh it's so hard and why it's a mask is because most of us that wear this that we had a lot of success or else we wouldn't be wearing it we it was what drove us like my insecurity to be a bigger guy is part of what made me successful what took me to all the way to the level to the professional level of competing is because that was already an easy hot button for me. Fuck, I'm, I've been competing against myself my whole life. I don't want to be the skinny guy. I never, even, you know, I didn't go on a cut till I was 30 years old. My whole life, I've been on the bulk. My whole and life, I've been on the bulk. Right. I was hey. on the, always <laughs> wanting to be bigger. And I didn't literally mean I was always bulking, but I was always wanting to grow. There was never once that I say, I'm going to intentionally go on a diet for six weeks. I spent my whole, like, first 30 years like that, man. It's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. And so you, you, it's, the, the problem is when you start to identify, and that's one of the issues with in, uh, with even social media. As you grow your business through social media, you're, you're not that either. Just like I said, don't identify with your body. You identify with your social media, then you become vulnerable, and there's going to be people that come after you, especially if you're big. You know, you, the, you are at the top. You're going to be the target, yeah. right? You're going to be the guy because you're the guy with the most followers. People are going to come after you. Well, it's gonna hurt when you identify with that, with who you, with who you are on that social media. Yeah. In reality, that's not you. This is you, right? This person we're talking right. to right now, as I meet you. And then, but there, the thing is, though, you a lot of who I was on the internet, who I am on the internet, is a part of me, though. A part of you, but For it's sure. not. But it's not. It's not everything. No, they don't know you. Is my point. Like yeah. who, do, who do they? They don't know you. They know your posts or whatever. And again, you're the top guy. You're not anybody to. I'm sure if they met you and they knew you, they probably wouldn't say those types of things. Yeah. So that, and that's really the, that's really the point. And especially when you grow a business on social media. I'll tell you what, man. It could be a motherfucker. It could be very, very difficult for people. But at the end of it, you also have a platform where you can share your message. Yeah, Part, you you got to ask yourself this, too. you got to ask yourself this, and I'm sure you already have, is maybe these challenges you're going through are kind of like school because Absolutely. now you have a platform where you could talk to others. And that's what I was saying about the whole losing my father thing and me talking to that girl about yeah. wanting to be in that place instead of this was like, but that's why I'm here today. So at this point in my life, I'm saying, so there must be something that I'm learning, supposed to be learning from those dates back in January until now that's going to make me better 
in the mm-hmm. future. Well, I'll tell you mm-hmm. what, man. If that didn't happen, you wouldn't have started a podcast and you wouldn't have met us. Right. Yeah, it's true. Boom. Yeah. 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 It's all good. I love it. Dude, uh, we actually have to fucking wrap yeah. up because yeah. we have to be somewhere. We got to do this again, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it was fun. I, you guys are awesome. And yeah. I unblocked you now. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, didn't, gotta, I didn't know. Yeah. You guys had to come up and visit. That was the mission. We got a whole media facility. We could do a whole bunch of video, audio, a bunch of shit like that. We're here to Saturday. We're up, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes from here. Maybe we'll come back over here and get a workout in one I had a lot of fun. Like seriously, sure. thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks, for thanks for inviting yeah. us down. It was yeah. it was like it was hard. Scheduling it was kind of fucked up, but I'm yeah. glad we sorted it out. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I'm glad you guys had us Definitely. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. you guys are awesome. Yeah, thanks. Right on, guys. Sure. Good time. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at MindPumpMedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic. MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee And you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump.